What's up, everybody? This is Keisha, and you are tuning in to That's Not Christian. Hey, guess what? Seek the crown. And now, to the millions and millions of listeners and viewers all across the world, Donnie, Donnie. It's the That's Not Christian Podcast. Hey, let's go. <laughs> Yo, what up, what up, man, y'all? It's your boy, Switch. <laughs> I'm here with your man, Jimmy. I'm here with your man, Jay. I'm here with your man, Ant. And we have a very, very special guest, Keisha. Hey, what's hey. up? What's let's going go. on, sis? How you doing? Man, I'm so good. I'm so good. I'm busy, but I'm good. I'm you tired. Busy. I'm good. good. Busy's great. <laughs> Busy's good. Yeah. Good thing. Happy New Year. That's Whoa. right. For real, man. Happy uh happy winter solstice for you pagans out there, man. <laughs> no, <laughs> man. <laughs> right. You said, you said it. <laughs> Janice, for all you guys out there. Nah. But yeah, man, we kicked in the new year. 2020 right. was uh wow. It was a uh, uh, it was uh, 2020 was was beautiful, man. Yeah, 2020 was wonderful, man. It was an opportunity for everybody to spend time with the family, to mm. level up. You know what I'm saying? To to not rely on a job, but to rely on the Lord. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Ooh, you get Christian, Christian, 2021, <laughs> bro. Save, save, yo. I don't understand why people mad at 2020. Hey, man, man. some people at, lost. Some people this, lost their family members. Hey, mm-hmm. I feel you, but a lot of that had to do, you know what I'm saying, with, with I feel like, I mean, I mean, are we starting the show right now or are we going through the yeah, week? We're <laughs> in this. That's it. We're in this. We started. <laughs> well, Yo, I feel back. you. I feel a lot, I, you know, in, in respect to the people, you know what I'm saying, who, who who lost their lives and whatnot. You know what I mean? I just, I actually just lost uh, my uncle on uh, Saturday, Saturday morning from COVID. Oh, wow. But he, he had a lot, of, a lot of other issues going on with him. You know what I'm saying? Our condolences, um, brother. You know, yeah, sorry I mean, it is, loss. it is what it is. You know what I mean? Like, Average. you know, but he lived his life, you know, and he lived it to the fullest. You know what I'm saying? And and, and because of that, and not to the fullest in the sense where like oh, the Bible tells mean. us, you know what I'm saying? Not, like, I already he, know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you reap what you sow. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And mm-hmm. the lifestyle, when you live a fast lifestyle, you know what I mean? Like, you, there's a cost for that, you know? Yeah. And uh, so that's why I've been I've been running. I've been trying to lose weight, man, because I'm not trying to get – I'm not trying to get all my bad decisions caught up with me. You know what I'm saying? Oh, okay. Like, so we got some 2020 goals, uh, 2021 goals, huh? Yeah, new, hey, well, you know what? Year, I, you, you know new what? You. New year, hey, new gym. Hey, it's, you know what? Get that you bad know what? body. <laughs> nah but i am gonna i am i i i am i am trying to um i am trying to lose weight definitely i'm just trying to be fit man i'm trying to be fit because you know this this is the temple that the lord gave me and i'm trying to glorify him you know what i'm saying and be healthy i'm not oh, trying to sex, eat none of that nasty today. stuff you know what i mean like bro it's yo i'm i'm at because like i was feeling i was feeling this certain vibe and then this morning i go on instagram and the first video I see is Keisha's video. And she talking about how your goals have to align with the word of God. And I was like, oh. let's go. All right. He got baptized <laughs> again after that. Hey, he got sick. Right. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I didn't get That's baptized crazy. again. You know what I'm saying? You know what's but, crazy is yeah. I got up at five in the morning this morning. And that Me I'm too. not a moon person. That never happens. Oh, where? And, uh, yeah. And I was like. And then I was just sitting there like, man, what am I going to do? Like, I'm just, uh, what do people do this early in the morning? <laughs> <laughs> what do people do this early? <laughs> and the Holy Spirit said, post that video. I was like, right now? I normally wait till like 8 a.m. You're like, it's too early. <laughs> yeah. And then he was You're like, like do I don't it. get any, I don't get any traction until 10 o'clock, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even so have I coffee did, yet. I was, like, I was like, ain't nobody about to see this. And then it just, you know, whatever. Everyone's yeah, that joint, that joint was fire. <laughs> That joint was fire, man. Because, I mean, it was true. There ain't nothing about it that was, you know what I mean? So for those who don't know, right, can you can you give them briefly what you talked about on that video? Yeah, I was just kind of talking about how, like, normally it's tradition to have New Year resolution goals or just right. goals in the beginning of the year, whether no matter what you want to call it. And I was just saying that, like, there's nothing wrong with making or setting goals, but if it doesn't align with the word of God, 
then right. you should go back to the drawing board and figure what that what that looks like. Make sure he's the one telling you what the goals are. Make sure it aligns with scripture and make sure you're doing that scripture. Bars. And if mm-hmm. you those three things, then you'll be all right. But if not, then you just it's you're going to you're going to fail. <laughs> Period. Bars. You hear mm-hmm. that? You hear that? Ooh, She's man, not not really only cool. not only she spitting bars when she rap, right? <laughs> but she spitting bars when she on IG, hitting you with that motivational bars Bible talk. Bars. You know what I mean? Man. Yeah, man. So you know, I'm I'm excited about this year, man. I th- I think I think a lot of people just needed a fresh start. They whatever the excuse was for 2020, right? I, I feel like a lot of people are like blaming stuff on 2020, but it's really an excuse, right? I feel like it's an excuse. Like, come on, Bishop. Say, like, I mean, you know what I mean? Like, yo, like, like not, 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 I mean, not the flex, but like we made the most money this year together, right? On an investment that we made, you know what I'm saying? Or other investments too, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. our time that we invested in, in, in this podcast, you know what I mean? Like we saw, we saw the most views, you know what I mean? We reached a lot of people. A lot of people reached out to us, you know, and, and, and told us like, yo, like this really helped me during like some really hard times, you know what I'm saying? So praise God. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm just I'm just amp, bro. I'm like, let's 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 do more, you know, let's do more, let's glorify God more so that people can, you know what I mean? Just 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 be motivated uh motivated to glorify him even more, you know? Mm. Facts. Okay. It ain't 2020's fault, man. It's the government, if anything, it's the government's fault. <laughs> The government <laughs> forced you. The government forced you to stay at the house when you could have been at your job making bread and paying your rent and you know what I'm saying and doing all that. Oh man, oh, something's never. You should have left it in 2020. It wasn't. It wasn't 2020. Sort it wasn't 2020. Of Jimmy. Sort of Jimmy. <laughs> sort of. You think so? Well, I mean, well, I have I have my feelings about. You think it was lockdowns. 20? You think it was 2020? You think it was 2020? Nah, it was, it was the government, fault? but it's also okay. That's it. We agree. <laughs> Next Can I topic. say something? <laughs> go yeah, ahead, go ahead. Of course. I, of course. I didn't know. I didn't know if we were diving into this or you know. Yeah, we know diving we had, in. We had an agenda, so I didn't Head know. Strong. <laughs> but, this is um, this is barbershop talk. This is a freestyle. Okay. So well, okay. anytime agenda, you want to yeah. interject, you just interrupt. Okay. Well, hey, I used to uh, I used to be in barbershops all the time, so I had no problem with that. Um, <laughs> right. So anyway, it looked like um, you in a barbershop right now with that background. <laughs> really, dude. a salon. Right. A salon, right. excuse me. Check it out. Go there. Visit there, guys. <laughs> it's Keisha.com. You, you you see it right there. For those who aren't watching, I'm listening. It's yeah. Keisha.com. Um, so anyway, so what about 2020? I think that um I think more than anything, it was a spiritual year. I think mm. that there was a lot of separation between wheat and tares. There was mm. a lot of exposing of darkness and light. There was a lot of, in, in a personal level and a corporate level, right? So I okay. think that the people that um, were tapped into Yahweh a little bit more, who had more successful years, whereas people that weren't, had, like more of a horrible year, other than the people that like, you know, actually experienced like family members dying. But I think overall, I think that people that had like, you know, God with them, they succeeded a little bit more because they had peace in the midst of a, in the midst of chaos. Whereas other people that did it, they didn't know how to handle. There was no hope, shift. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and 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 it really revealed because there was a lot of people that claimed to be believers that it really showed their either their lack of faith or their struggle in faith. It was just, it was just a lot. I think it was just a big reveal. It was a big mm-hmm. reveal, and it was a big reveal on a personal level, and it was a big reveal just like corporately worldwide like you got to see like things for what they really are and what you did with that was really up to you I agree with him in a sense of like you know you were either going to take that and you were going to like like me personally I I was like yeah for the first like four months I was like I'm gonna stay at your feet God I don't even know what's going on because I work in a school so they shut schools down um oh wow so I just got to for the first couple months just stay at God's feet and just stay at scripture and then he began to show me things that I never even thought to look in like politics, Hollywood, like right. all these things he started revealing and showing. And it was just like, dang, man, this really is a matrix we live in. Yeah. Yeah. I've been out here sure. selfishly ambitious, uh, ambitious, trying to get this higher platform and trying to get this and really it don't really matter. Like, I don't know. So I just feel like it was a, it was a paradigm shift and you either, it either shifted you to in the right direction or it shifted you in a, yeah. in a bad direction. And it was yeah. like, it was like, it was something that, you, like you said, like, 
it, it just didn't matter because it's like you couldn't control it. You know what I mean? It's not like you can just see COVID and stop it. You know what I'm saying? Like it's it's a virus and wait, you, you couldn't know. just blow COVID away? <laughs> and, uh, nah, not really? like not like the preachers were saying. But you know, it's like it's like the war that you had. You know, it's like Ken like, Copeland, right? You know, in warfare. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? Like, like if there's enemies, like physical enemies, you can you know defend yourself. But with this, it was like no defending yourself. It was really just like you said, like having faith in, in the Lord. You know what I mean? And making sure that that you're good at the end of the day. Yeah, you know, you I I agree because because it I think it I think it's 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 a lot to do with your perspective, right? Um, and when you trust in the Lord, you know that he's your source, right? Uh, you know that he's your provider. Like, yeah, you might stress a little, but you have that peace when you go back to the word and you're like, okay, God, I know. Okay. 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 I know you got me, God. You know what I mean? Regardless, that doesn't necessarily mean that like 10 stacks are going to fall from the sky, but you know that no matter what, you're going to be good as long as you got the Lord, you know? And so I think that the mindset too, uh, whereas like a lot of people were panicking and, and, and worried. You know what I mean? Because people are dying, but I'm looking at the numbers like, yo, I got a 99% chance of surviving. You know what I'm saying? And that's how I'm looking at it. I'm not looking at it like, yo, I'm gonna die, you know? Man. And 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 so it, it definitely is um perspective, you know. It's 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 but you know, a lot of people, the media lies, you know what I mean? This like true, I said, this was the matrix, you know what I mean? They were inflating numbers, then yes. information would change. If you don't have discernment understanding if you don't if you trust everything your government says you just think that they're batting a 5,000 you know what I mean if that everything that you hear on the news is true of course you're gonna panic of course you're right. gonna be like upset especially when that's in the cycle too house. you're right okay. I'm in I'm in the, I'm in the state where it was the I was we were in the front of it like we were right. like for a minute everyone was watching Washington saying like what's going on over there what they're gonna happen Seattle is like crazy wicked man crazy wicked that's right. And you so, out there. Shout out to Tacoma 253. Stand up. I got people's out there. <laughs> this dude was claiming his gang. Well, six all What's day. I'm just playing. <laughs> nah, but you're like people. You claiming your gang sets it. over there, man. What's going on, man? Nah, I'm repping for my people's out in Tacoma, man. Tacoma. You know what I mean? I'm shouting them out. That's all. Ain't no gangs. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, people was watching the news, man. They were seeing yeah. like people getting sick. It was just like these crazy hidden agendas. Yeah. I wasn't, I'm sorry. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I'm like him, yeah, man. I'm just, I'm different. Like I was out at the beach. I was out at the lake when I could go outside. And it was Yo, them beaches out. are cold over there. What were you doing out in the beaches, man? <laughs> no, man. Our summers are beautiful. Oh yeah? Yeah. I was, okay. man, we were, I was kicking it. It wasn't okay. until it was I was raining over there. Right? Inside. <laughs> saw, every time I've been hell. there, it's raining, bro. <laughs> when do you come? The fall? I've been there in years, but yeah, pretty uh, much. Pretty yeah, much. Well, you got to come in the summer. Perfect weather. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's beautiful out there, man. Mad trees. They're not the Cali kind, like beautiful pine trees hey, and stuff like yo. that. Not the Cali <laughs> kind. Right, the you know, you got to be clear, you know? Hey, but Keith said something good, too, like about the... um about exposure, man. A lot of people, a lot of things got exposed um, last year, man. Even our system, even the way our government runs, you know what I mean? The, the, mm -hmm. the, 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 the you know, because people were like, they, they were against Black Lives Matter with Marxism and stuff like that, right? right? But then it was like, well, capitalism ain't really working for us, you know what I'm saying? Like, people are, they're literally like, what, $70 billion of, of people who, you know, people who might get evicted and it's up to like seventy billion dollars. They're saying, like, are dead. But that, but that's debt, not capitalism's yeah. fault. That's government's fault for making people stay home, though. Yeah. Well, I mean, this, that's, the only pushback I have with that is just, well, it is their fault in the sense that they didn't prepare better for this, with especially with hospitalizations, because that's really why they're shutting down. Is because the hospitalizations are like, they're they're overflowing. You know, patients. Ah, that wasn't hospitals. the case, bro. That wasn't the case because, um, no, because in New York, in New York, in New York and L.A., in New York and L.A., they had those, uh, those ships that were at, at the, at the, at the, like at the docks or at the bay or whatever. Yeah, they did the. They, didn't even, they didn't even use them. No, nah, and they didn't use. They had they packed out Safeco Field and put beds and all kinds of stuff, and not one person was in that arena. See what I'm wow. saying? Oh yeah. I got I got a nurse who who was you know where it all started up here in Kirkland. She works at that hospital, 
it got it got a little busy, but it wasn't what they were saying on the yeah. news. My mom, my mom works in another hospital in Spokane. It, it's it's lies, man. And I know some people tr- tr- truly, genuinely got COVID, but right, I also right. know it's a man made. It's a man made virus. It's not. It's you know what I mean. And I also know I know a gang of people that got it. And if you have a strong immune system, you can beat it. It's just like the flu, right? Yeah. Um, it's a strong version of the flu. And if you have you know other conditions whether that's diabetes or cancer, then yeah, it's going to hit you hard because you have a weak right. immune system. But yeah. I, like I, I'm in agreement where this showed you, like we're talking about perspective and to talk about revelation, this, what, what blew me away was when everyone started like shopping for toilet paper. When I went to the grocery store, I couldn't get a toilet paper roll, but there was apples, orange, vintage, that no one got <laughs> healthy stuff. Yeah. You're worried about your immune system. You ain't even trying to put it up. You want hot dogs and toilet paper. <laughs> you could just go in the bathroom and wash your behind, right? <laughs> no, I'm kidding, man. Uh, well, nobody yeah. wanted to get white bees. <laughs> oh, everybody was taking that, bro. Too. I, I everybody was taking paper. the water. I got toilet paper. I got I got white bees. I got a bidet. I got all of that, bro. We ready for the <laughs> zombie apocalypse, bro. <laughs> Dude, just, zombie ready. I don't know what what, what y'all was waiting for diarrhea. <laughs> <laughs> hey, them shelves were empty, bro. I got a family of six, bro. So we gotta stay stocked up, man. For real. Oh, six. I got a yeah, hose. Man. What we do you guys feel right, about? Down. Well, how you guys feel when individuals say like twenty twenty is trash? It sucked. It was garbage. Yeah, I don't say that, man. I, I appreciate every day that the Lord gives me on this earth, man. Right. I, I can't say it's trash. I mean, bro, I live in America. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm gonna be all right. <laughs> like, I got family in El Salvador, bro. Bro, like the 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 average salary in El Salvador is three hundred dollars a month. Wow. You know what I'm saying? It ain't that bad for me. I can't say yeah. it's trash. You know what I mean? Yeah. I can't. I, and I still live in the hood, though. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not living it up. I still live in the hood. Like, I go for a jog and I see people smoking crack. I see people shooting heroin. Like, I still live in the hood, bro. But I'm grateful, well, you know, that I have a roof over my head, man. God has always provided for me, man. Yeah. I can't say it's trash. Yeah. I, I get there. I get people's, I guess, I get people why they say that. You know, as a whole, obviously, 2020 was rough. Um in that you couldn't do what you would normally do on a regular yeah. basis, depending who you ask. You, you couldn't eat inside Applebee's or something like that. Right. Yeah. Like, And then all of a sudden, you know, it's trash or, you know, you couldn't visit people in Thanksgiving or, you know, anything like that. Or you couldn't well, you fly. You had a lot of things. You had B- basketball oh, was played in a bubble. You yeah. Know I mean, uh, uh, celebrities that passed away, like legends, people that people consider legends. Right, but people I mean, die every day, B. Exactly. You <laughs> had, you had, you people had what happened. In, you had what happened in Beirut. You know what I mean? Oh, like yeah. that explosion. Uh, I mean, oh, yes, yeah. that's that's uh, serious. Yes. Yeah. But to say that the whole year was trash because of that event, uh, I think I it mean, just goes back to perspective. perspective. Right, perspective, right. You know yep. what I mean? I don't agree. Yeah. Twenty twenty was the best year of my life. But, I would have to say the same thing know, too. But but that's you know, awesome. other people don't agree with that. And hey, that's on you. But it ain't. I'm not gonna let you Debbie down my ear. Right. <laughs> I like that. No. You, exactly. you want to be Debbie, Debbie down over that, here? That's your, pers- <laughs> that's your perspective. Hey, you know, I ain't gonna tell you otherwise. I mean, you know your situation and your life better than right. I do. But I'll right. tell you what, it was the greatest thing for me. Right. Now I know I realize that I have been more blessed in this, but I also serve Yahweh. So. Right. That's what happens when he's your dad. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. That just, that's just, I, to me, I just felt like that was a way for believers to minister and be like, well, have you heard of Yeshua? Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, what about you, right. hey, Switch? You, you, you think it was, it was 2020 was trash? That's how you feel? Nah, that's your vibes? I, I, nah. Yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't feel like people should be saying that. Like, right. Right. You know, like all of this is the Lord's will, in my opinion. Right. You know what I'm saying? He's sovereign, so who, absolutely. Who are we to call what God has done trash? You know what I'm saying? Like this is right. all part of his plan and his purpose. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. I get it. I get the sentiment, like, you know, it was unfortunate. And I, I'll be I'll say this is the most unforgettable year, you know what I mean? Because I never lived my life this way where I'm at, you know what I mean? I'm not working, I'm at home, I'm with the kids, homeschooling them. 
Right. But I, like you guys said, like I was, I've been blessed through this year. Like I probably saved the most mo money this year. You know what I'm saying? Than ever I'm in my life. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yo, I'm, you realize how much money you spend eating out, right? When you go yeah, to work? Yeah. Like, yo, that them lunches cost, that breakfast cost. You know what I'm saying? And, it's and a, also, it was it was a rat race, bro. We yeah. lived in a rat race. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We got slowed yeah, down. Sure. Big time. Bang. Slow it down. Especially and in then, New York. I know it's a rat race there. I used to go there yeah. all the time. Right. And then also um, just homeschooling my, my kids. You know what I mean? Like being with them. Like I, I enjoy like that time. You Yo, know and they gonna remember people. that, bro. Like yeah. they really gonna remember that. Like you know, Bobby sat down with me and read to me, or he went over my homework with me. Like, cause I remember when my pops used to, you know what I mean. Like, and this is just like after school coming home, and he used to sit and and help me with my math. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. So you being there every day with him, sitting with him in his classes. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you gonna remember that, man. That bonding time that that you spend with him, man. That's that's gonna last a lifetime. Nah, I want it. I want it to continue. I'm like, I'm trying to figure out how to make money from You're home like, and just I'm and a, just stay I'm home. Be a, I'm gonna get my teaching them. credentials, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to become a principal, but, right? But only for my son. <laughs> Yo, like, because he's he's doing so good in school. Like he's yeah. he's doing great. You know what I mean? And I feel like no, like I said this before, like no one's gonna pay attention to your children like yourself. You know what I mean? Right. Like, That's facts. Even though you That's might facts. have like. I, and and his teacher is great. Like you know, what I mean, she's very attentive. She's she's a wonderful woman. But it's yeah, and, and I appreciate her. But it's just like, yo, my son, like, bro. Yeah, but it's different when you gotta right. You gotta pay attention to twenty five kids, thirty kids versus yeah. you focusing Look, on your one. Yeah. That's yeah. it. It's a that's challenge. It. It's 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 hard. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I work in the middle school, so I can I can testify to all oh, of this. Oh no. It, it 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 realigned the thing the way things are supposed to be. I remember because right. I went and stayed at uh, I went to my family's house um, three hundred miles away, and it was nice when I would walk the neighborhood to see families on walks or bike yeah. rides together, or looking in somebody's house and see them having dinner together, or kids jumping around playing outside before you know they got too scared. You know what I mean? Now, I mean, like, I don't know how old you guys are, but I'm I'm in my 30s and I was a kid that played outside. I, I right. we were the generation that started technology. So but I saw so I still had a childhood. These kids mm -hmm. these days have not had a childhood, man. Mm -hmm. They're just behind screens and cell phones yeah. and tablets yeah. and social media. So mm -hmm. it kind of forced them to, like, be outside. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it was nice to see. And at the end That's of the true. day. A lot of parents would come in and they expected us to reprimand their kids, teach their kids. Right. We're here to, yes, this is our job, but at the end of the day, you're the, f you're the fresher. Right. You know what I mean? So like, if you're not teaching them and they ain't listening to you, what you expect me to do? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Right. That's, that's, so, what that's, why you, that's why you see them world star videos of kids getting slapped up because the parents didn't smack them at the house. <laughs> you know? Yo, my son start acting up. Let me put this joint on mute real quick. Listen, man. Let, you better let me grab that chancleta <laughs> real quick. Yeah. He already know. <laughs> what about you, uh, Ant? You think 2020 was trash? Uh no, nah. Said, nah. I didn't do. I yo, three, I got three trees. Ain't nothing trash about twenty twenty. <laughs> yo, tr um, twenty twenty. It didn't stop me from doing anything. You on your no. Andy menu, huh? You can't stop me. It didn't stop me. I mean, we still went to the beach. We still mm -hmm. saw family. We still did. You know, we spent more time at home with the kids. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like in the beginning when everything was shut down, but. I enjoyed that, man. I enjoyed not having to run around and go to three different practices and, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. So just being able to just chill at home, you know, mm -hmm. have cooking dinner early and letting the kids play in the back. Like, I enjoyed that. Um, yeah. It was cool, man. Like, we, and like, like he just said, we would go out in the neighborhood and just have family walks. Yeah. It was cool. We didn't have to rush anywhere. So, you know. We would do our shopping for like one or two weeks so we didn't have to keep going to the store. And then every day we would just be chilling, man. And you Yo. know, Georgia, Georgia's yeah. open. So right. it, it didn't stop us from if we wanted to go to a restaurant or if we wanted to go. Right. So, you know, and still spend time with the fam. So shout out to Uber Eats, man. <laughs> I, if it wasn't if it wasn't Go for dash. 2020, 
Yeah, if it wasn't for 2020, man, I wouldn't have known what DoorDash or Uber Eats was. You know what I mean? I, I used to hate on it. Like, why am I going to pay $5 for somebody to bring me my food? You know what I mean? Yo, I but when this joint hit, I was like, yo, let me go ahead and just go ahead and order myself a little cheeseburger right quick. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Pick Up Only, too. What's that? I go, when y'all oh, go oh, oh, Walmart or y'all go to Target. Pick up, yeah. Oh, oh okay. That. Yeah, you okay. mentioned that. Nah, I get my joint delivered. No, man. it's the grocery stores delivering to your door. That's what's up. Yeah, I got to. I did that. Shop. I wouldn't have never done that. In the Thanksgiving Instacart, week, baby. I did that. Instacart, baby, let's go. <laughs> yeah, Instacart was my favorite app. Now I did I'm prime. like, oh, I could. Man, I love it. I did it all. I didn't I do it often. Cause I'm not. I don't like out eating out. To, I don't like eating out at other restaurants often because right, right. i don't know people don't wash their hands I'm, i don't I like to cook but yeah. every once in a while you know what i mean it was nice yeah yeah i i i, I agree 100 percent. Yo, yo jay you um your kids started school today right oh man yeah my Already? daughter well she's well my wife got this email from one of the uh, places she visits uh, well she used to visit um, where you take the kids and they like jump around or whatever. It's like educational stuff. So they said that they're going to offer for her, for my daughter's age, she's only two, um, like a pre K type of like yeah. virtual school, schooling thing. So we was, I told her, I was like, Oh, let's try it out for a month and see how it goes. And today, today was the first day. And Oh man, it was a nightmare. Rough. Yeah, it was rough. She, what is this pre K? She's yeah. two, right? I, I guess, two? Well, you know what it is, and the other kids in that in that uh, I guess cl- virtual classroom, um, they were just chilling. But yeah. she just didn't want anything to do with the computer. She didn't want to do anything with the TV. Fist nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, and I. You know what it is? It's because them other what? kids are on Ritalin. <laughs> they were drooling. Yo, oh, it's sitting in front of the camera. Probably used to being behind the screen. True. Oh, true. That's true. That's true. Just de de roll her from there, man. Hey, but you know what album. though? You know what though? Like, like, I don't know. One of you said that is because she's two. But my my shorty started reading when she was two. She did that. Uh, wow. Your baby can read, right? And my yeah. wife was like, "Yeah, my wife was drilling her, man. She would be with the flashcards, boom, boom, boom. She put on the videos." What's this word say? What's this word say? I got a video. I'm going to share it with you guys on, on the Telegram chat. Um, and she's two years old. and Because, you know, it's it's all memorization. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. And so she's yeah. looking at the letters. She can she can decipher it. You know what I mean? And she was reading that too, bro. Wow. She was spelling her. Actually, reading I, 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 I think I think she was she's reading at a college at a, at a college level. Um, wow. And what grade I, is she? Uh, she's Four she's in eighth four. grade right now. Wow. Um, That's dope. Good God. But uh, I forgot what I was gonna say. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> whatever. No, you were talking about memor- memorization and you were militant on her. Yeah, yeah, bro. She was. Just, it's just spending that time with her, and, and and she's energetic too. Um, I think she she's like me. I think she has an ADD. Um, so it was like understanding that. You know what I'm saying? Like, like drilling her for like two minutes. All right, go ahead and you know and and, and, and go do something for two minutes, and then come back. You know what I mean? That sort of thing, and keeping it entertaining. It wasn't just like two hours of class like it is now you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. like when you go to school yeah. it was more so like spurts of of like you know learning and stuff like that so um i actually think she was she was reading at 18 months i want to say not two years but wow. i definitely i definitely have a video of her at two years old so i'll stick with wow, two years epic. but yeah I'm but i didn't believe it yeah do it do it because I, I didn't believe i didn't believe in that my, my mother-in-law bought it um and and I was like, man, this is this is a joke. This is this is, you know. And and then my wife just started doing it. And it, you know what it is? It's consistency. That's all it is. Yeah, it's yeah. consistency. You know, right? Because um, I just recently became a mom this year. That was another reason why this year oh, was crazy. Hey, oh, congratulations. Wow. Right. congratulations! Thank you. It's not like I didn't have him or anything. I I I got in the two year old. He's my my brother's kid, but I'm taking yeah. him in. And, nah, that is, um, that's still a mom. That's still a yeah. parent. Terrible twos though hit me just like yeah. I didn't get nine months. A baby, you didn't get shot. the cute little baby no. stage. You just got like ah, <laughs> hardcore, just I'm yeah. messing everything up. But no, but he's like incredibly athletic. Like you mm. should see it. He's a beast. Like he can jump, run. Like it's crazy. So like any ball he touches, he just like he's a beast. Yo, have but you seen? So, hmm? 
Go ahead, go ahead. My no, bad, yeah. My so bad. I'm just like I just I'm like I'm not. You're not gonna be a dumb jock. Like you're gonna know yeah. your colors and your letters and right. <laughs> read and write. You and you can still be stuff. you can still be a jock. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. it, it, it it'll help you get into that college you want to get into. But you, but gonna, you need you a backup gonna... plan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> and I know because exactly. that was me. I was a big basketball player, and I got yeah. Into... You used to play ball, right? Mm-hmm. What? Yeah, I, I got yeah. I, I caught that in her rhymes. Yeah, yeah I used to be one of the. T- I was hoop. the number one point guard here in the state. Wow. One of the best wow. on the coast. Yeah, I used to travel all over. Yeah. What happens? Why? ACL? Uh, mm, no, so like oh. um, I used to play so much. I was playing. I started playing on a high school team when I was in seventh grade. So oh, wow. I was playing middle school plus high school all the time. And then once I got out to high school, I just played multiple teams. And then whenever my team got a break, then other like other coaches would hit up my dad because my dad was my coach. And they'd be like, can we borrow Keisha and Nachi, which was this other good player? And my dad would be like, yeah. So we would play literally nonstop. And so I had ended up developing shin splits. Mm. And, you know, of course, you hurt, but you played through the pain. And then it ended up turning into a hairline fracture. But I didn't know that because I was just wow. used, I was just a hooper. Yeah. Um and so anyways, we went off to nationals in North Carolina, balled out. Wow. I was so pumped, came back, and we went to this uh, small tournament up in Olympia. We were running a team out. My dad wanted me out the game, but I was having so much fun just playing with my team. I didn't come out, and I should have because all of a sudden the ball rolls, and it was like a fast break. There was just so much going on. I tried to pick it up. My foot stepped on the ball, and I just went like that and cracked oh. Cracked, I cracked my bone and had like uh, pretty much a almost a compound fracture. Yeah. Wow. So it was literally my shin, the middle of my leg. And so when they went to go straighten it out and, you know, put it in a cast and everything, they asked my dad if they could put a pin in. And, you know, this was years ago before they were doing like more advanced stuff with bones. Yeah. And my dad was like, she's not about to have metal in her leg. And um, he's like, that'll slow her down. So they never put a pin in my leg. So when it healed. Cause I had a cast all the way up my thigh, then to my knee. Like I was literally out for months and it just didn't heal correctly. Mm-hmm. And so my bone healed like at a 45 degree angle. And oh, wow. so when I went to go play again and just put more damage on it, then it started messing with my muscles. So by the time I signed um, for college, I went and played freshman year at New Mexico state. And I wow. just, I mean, it hurt at the touch. I couldn't even play anymore. I had surgeries. And so the, the doctor pretty much just told me I needed to, Hang up the shoes, man. And, oh, man. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. And um, he's like, but you, you, can, still, you can still play, though. You just can't play like on that level, right? Yeah. No, no. Yeah. I could like, I'll go out and shoot and I'll do like, you know, I'll be like Michael Jordan when he was like, you know, number 45 or whatever. Right. <laughs> shooting, shooting mid range, shooting some threes. Be schooling but, uh, people at the park, right? <laughs> Yeah. And then, like, well, you know, I because look, I tried like years later. Right. Like after like the Lord called me into like his marvelous light. I was like, OK, right. I, like, you know, I haven't played in a while. I'll go out and play some hoop with the church people. <laughs> Man, I went out there first game. I ruptured my Achilles. So, oh, like, oh. No. <laughs> yeah. so for me and basketball, like I felt like God said, I done told you we done with this sport. <laughs> right. OK. Take wow. this music, anime. <laughs> right. <All> right. <laughs> wow. Wow. Oh, oh man. That's I was going to see if you wanted to play one-on-one, but... We can play a horse, man. I ain't getting injured no more. She said horse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That's oh, rough. man. You don't want to play horse with her. She said she was, she was a guard, man. You don't want to play with her. Shooter. All She's day. All day. Yeah. Buckets. Yeah, man. <laughs> I, I'll be, I'm heck. I'm rusty though, man. I'm telling you, I haven't. I haven't played like for real, for real, so long. It's not even funny. I mean, you when you dribble, you could always dribble. You know what I mean? Right, like I pick yeah, up right. ball and just you know whatever. Because that was I had handles, but I no. If you, I you, ever dared to get on, it would be like embarrassing. I already know. <laughs> you watch a lot of NBA, watch a lot of NBA games now. Heck no, man. No. Nah. Heck no. No, man. I used to, and I'm gonna tell you why. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna be honest because I told, I told the father that I was gonna start being more honest and more bold. The reason why I don't watch that stuff anymore is because I think it's all fake. I used mm-hmm. to be a diehard Lakers fan. Like there was nobody who loved Kobe more than me. Mm-hmm. But I just feel like the Freemasons run the world and they run even the NBA. So mm-hmm. it's hard for me to watch something that I just don't feel like is real. 
Hold on, let's explore this. Why do you feel that? Uh, oh man, the run, we're having our Alex here. Jones sessions right now. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I'm, I'm mad curious because you know she mentioned the Matrix earlier. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and, and the, the, the reason why I ask you is because I'm I'm the one. I don't know if you ever listen, but I'm the one who usually mm-hmm. talks like this. Mm-hmm. So having you here, you know what I mean, is a blessing. <laughs> He got back up today, guys. Like, Damn, it. Damn it, we got two of them. <laughs> you feel like no, it's fake, I mean, like it's rigged, or you yeah. feel like it's fake? Oh yeah, yeah. Hundred percent. I mean, the talent's there, right? We can't deny mm-hmm. that they're talented, sure. that they're athletic, and all that other stuff. But yeah, I think there's things that can be from the ref calling to just mm. like people knowing their place, people knowing people know what they can and can't do, right? Um. You know what I Even mean? Even off the People, court too, right? Yeah, off the court. It's all politics. I mean, look at look at. I mean, I like I said, I'm a little bit older, so I remember in the '90s, man. Like, we wasn't seeing what they was wearing right before the games. We didn't care about what <laughs> rest, Russell Web- Westbrook wearing capri pants, Come peach capri pants. pants right. You know what I mean? Or what? Right. You know what I mean? What uh, LeBron James was doing? And I feel like I don't know. I just feel like you know. The whole technology thing is intentional. Um, it's keep people distracted. It's keep people focused on the wrong things. And yeah, you know what I mean. I just I don't know. Like I don't I don't want to go too deep and scare anybody or nothing like that. No, cool. A lot of people can't handle it. But it's if you just go study it and you go watch it and you know what I mean. It's it's literally hidden in plain sight. Um, they they operate off of symbolism. Satan is arrogant, so he does things intentionally in plain sight to people keep people like a part of the matrix but not really knowing and that's what i that's like when i do my freestyles and stuff i kind of talk about that Mm. um and i'm starting to talk about it more in my music because that's what he revealed to me this year just like do you see why i say i'm the truth the way in the life there's literally no other way besides me Mm. like everything else around here is a lie and i'm like dang yo i finally see it so you know it's out there remember that that ref back in the day that came out and said that they used to control the flow of the games he had um nah you don't remember didn't they, he, didn't they do something in, to his house or something right nah well he was he that? um he was gonna put a book out and then man they did so much foul stuff to him I think they they tried uh, to get him locked up for um some gambling stuff but he was putting his book out man they 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 blackballed him oh, all man. of a sudden um wow. the publisher wasn't gonna release it. I'm sure I'm sure you know all those owners and whoever in the league oh, has yeah. something to do with all of that. Oh, but yeah. he he had basically said that, you know, they purposely um call no 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 they purposely call certain uh the way they call the games controls the flow of the game, right? So if uh if a team is on a roll, they'll they'll disrupt that by by some stupid Foul, calls and, yeah, right sure. and stuff wow. like that. And yeah. then that just messes up their flow and then turns around and helps the other team. I think he said he was a part of um San Antonio when San Antonio was um during their time of, with Tim Duncan. Uh, and he said he's done some stuff to make sure that it went that way. So Wow. And it is deeper than that, too. I mean, you know, a lot of these people, um, you know, they do got extra strength and extra power because of what they did to get it. It's deep. It goes really, really deep. It goes yeah. really, really deep, man. It sucks, Met Gala man. Deep. Ooh. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Wait, it's, it's really what? sad because all it does uh, is it, it it creates an illusion for little kids watching them. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? It's yeah. like what they it's like YouTubers, right? You don't know how many middle schoolers that tell me they don't need to go to class because all they're gonna do is become a YouTuber. YouTuber. Mm-hmm. I'm like, do you That's know my son? <laughs> do, you, do you know what these? Do you know what these? He's gonna be Ryan next. He wants to, to be Ryan. Kids, these deals, like you know what I mean? Do you know what they have to put up these like? Did you see that documentary on um what are those uh what's that music that the the young kids like with the Asians and it's like not even in the English language but the oh, girls go wild over it you know what I'm talking it's like about like K-pop Yeah K-pop have you seen the uh that little documentary show where it talks about nah. like those people are actually crazy miserable No nah. Oh yeah you know, I haven't I haven't seen the documentary you're talking about but I've heard of that like a lot of these people a lot of these groups what they do is like they 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 build these bands and they get these people who are proficient in like singing and dancing and whatnot. And they put them like in a house and then they train all the time, but that's all they do. Like their whole objective is to be superstars. And so like, they wow. got singing classes. They got, they got dancing classes. They do all of this. The, the, their meals are, 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 are already like made for them and everything. They can't, they don't have any choices. They're like robots. They don't and have so freedom. A lot of them, they don't have a yeah, life. They're depressed. Mad depressed. 
So then they grow yeah. up. They grow up to be drug addicts, right? That's what happens. Yeah, it's like Disney. Yeah, Bro, I was gonna say that. Kids, <laughs> like Disney. But you know, <laughs> I just I just did a video about this. I don't know if I did it on IG or if I did it on Facebook, but I read a scripture in Proverbs Proverbs thirty, I think it is, where I, day right here. I think it was uh, I don't know if it was Solomon or David. Somebody wrote it though, clearly, and uh, it said, "Don't make me rich, but don't make me poor." Right. Mm. And it says, "Just give me enough because if I'm rich, then I'll forget about you, and if I'm poor, I'll do ungodly acts." Right. And so he's asking, just give me enough so I could pretty much be good, give my inheritance and just move on. Like, give me somewhere, somewhere in the middle. And so a lot of people are in a rush to get rich, but don't realize being rich is a curse. Yeah. Being poor is a curse, but being rich is a curse. You don't right. want to be rich. Right. I don't know why we this illusion, man, it's an illusion. Yeah, that's, that's why cool. you say that. I, um, I was watching the the New Year's Eve, uh, Rockin' Eve, whatever, on ABC. And it was funny because they had four or five families, right, for the Powerball, you know, the oh, lottery. Yeah. They were the finalists. And I was like, see, this is how you know all this stuff is rigged. How are you going to have a finalist for the lottery? And then all of a sudden they're going to have the numbers show up. And, oh, guess what? One of these families actually picked those same numbers. Like, come on. But what was interesting, because uh, that made me think of it while you were talking about how this family – that one, they were going crazy, and then, like and then in my head, I'm like, <laughs> and then yeah, and then uh, and then in my head, I'm like, man, like your life is just exposed to all these people. You're gonna have all these cousins, aunts, uncles <laughs> who are gonna come after you. Hey, and hey, cousin Jay, cousin Jay, can I buy four hundred thousand dollars? <laughs> Yo, but it wasn't like yeah. a regular lottery, though. It wasn't like the regular Powerball. I mean, whatever it no, is, they, it? they still they still made you know they won millions of dollars. You they know? won one point four million. Yeah, I mean, which technically ain't that's even a lot anymore, right? So yeah, once taxes hit, once taxes hit, like six hundred thousand, six hundred, right? But it depends you know on the what? state too. Yeah, it does depend on that. But you know what? I remember watching. I read and watch a lot of documentaries. So sorry, I'm gonna put out a lot of useless facts. But I remember watching a documentary <laughs> like five six years ago about most people that win the lottery end up losing all their money. Yeah. yeah yeah that's facts yep. that's yeah. facts five years because they blow it mc yeah. hammer style everybody because gets... the thing is man you guys why the bible talks about you gotta be a good steward over your money you just mm-hmm. get a billions yeah. and billions of dollars and you still have the same spending habits you had when you was poor trying to it, it it's You're crazy gonna spend more and being yeah. more debt yeah right yeah. you blowing it oh man. i could afford that house now yeah <laughs> that's what yeah, switch gonna do i want a 20 million you're trying to get everybody a house. You're trying to give Uncle Tim that you ain't seen in 10 years. <laughs> right. Mansion, right. You get a, a four-wheeler and a pool. Right. And a gold yeah, so chain. Switch, switch, switch wants that 2K Stimmy money so you could do the same thing. Yo, send that trying to get. Yeah. They're trying to get that Gucci man. belt and then flip-flops, huh? Hey, man, to I need a Gucci nice piece, man. I need a nice chain, man. You know what oh, I'm saying? Man. Some Jordans. He's going to get one of them, <laughs> one of them tight Cubans around his with, neck. With what they're giving, you could go one of them quarter machines, put one of those. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> go down the canal, man. Go down Yo, the canal. You get about, you get about 20 of those, man. You're going to mm-hmm. be rich. <laughs> the whole like family get one. So they so they passed the well first Trump was like nah I want them 2k and then wait 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 like, rewind a little bit cuz he said it this stimulus was supposed to be the biggest ever it's going to be huge right yeah, after the election it's big and then, yep. and then they got and then they sent out big. 600 600 dollars to a couple of people cuz I, I don't Yo he low I, yeah, I, I ain't nothing. get stimulated yet I, got I didn't mine. get nothing I got oh, you got yours you got, got oh, you got okay. yours Yo, y'all lost. And pay for my gas. <laughs> <laughs> she driving a Hummer, <laughs> right? <laughs> for real. <laughs> she got. She got that. She got she that. Remember, Rubicon. she said she drove three hundred miles away. So you know. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, got, I, got, I do a lot of driving, man. I do a lot of driving. Nah, I don't know why anybody believed the government. As soon as I heard it, I said, "Yeah, okay." Yeah. Right. I was surprised we even got twelve hundred the first round. To be honest with you, right, uh, right, right. I. I and this is just me personally. I've always felt this way. This is like before Christ, after Christ. Like I've always felt this way. Like I never put my trust in the government. I mean, mm. the government is what the government is. It's like, first off, he told us, all right, well, you want a king? Because we're essentially what they are. That's what a, that's, yep. right. that's what they are. They're a government. 
Right. The kingdom, right? They're the kings, they're the rulers of this nation. You want them? Okay, well, they're going to rob you. They're going to steal mm-hmm. from you. They're going to take half of what you own. He was like, since you want it so bad, here you go. Well, these right. people, I mean, t- come on, man. Let's look at the stimulus bill. They done put a vaccination distribution in a, a fund inside the stimulus bill. Right. Is this for the American people and the loss of their jobs, or is this for some agenda for you guys to make vaccines more mandatory or whatever right. your plans are in the end? Like, right. what what is that doing in there? Why are why are multi billion dollar uh, churches are getting more millions of dollars out of mm-hmm. these PPP loans? It makes no sense. Mm-hmm. And then the They're, money that goes overseas to foreign aid and all that. Because there is yeah. no more. We oh, don't what was it? Seventy nine million for Senate's furniture, or eighty nine million? They have cocktails. They have a. They got paid more money so they can have cocktail lunches. <laughs> it, this is at this point. It's a. We joke. gonna have like, you on the show again. We gonna have you on the show. I like this. I like this. Nah, she's right. It is a joke. And <laughs> and you know what? And and you said something that's 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 true, like well, what the word says, you know what I'm saying? Like the Lord never intended it for us to have a king or, or anyone uh, or over, over us, us, you know ever. what I'm saying? And now we live in this kind of society, whatever, you know, we obviously we pray and we, you know what I mean, all, all that good well, what stuff. A, what about the prophecies, Switch? What <laughs> prophecies? The prophecies about Trump, bro. Oh, Come on, bro. Uh, we're going to get mean? to that another the, time. Actually, man. the me time out time out i forgot in the beginning i'm lying oh, thank you holy spirit i'm lying in the <laughs> very beginning when he started showing me all these things at first i did have a little bit of faith that god was using trump i really did because mm-hmm. the holy spirit said i'm using him so in my mind i'm thinking oh he's a man of god oh he's gonna help us and do this other stuff and that was one of the things i started researching and then after a while i realized really it's just i had to repent i repented publicly and everything because i had people really starting to follow trump i was like, okay hold on guys no, I was lying. He's not really a good guy. <laughs> None of them are. <laughs> Wait, so choice. Trump is not so Jesus and Trump is not better? Shots <laughs> <laughs> oh. fired. I thought yeah. wow. You, you said what? Oh, wait, slow down. What'd you say? Say that again. <laughs> I said, is Jesus and Trump not better? Is what you, what you guys wow. are saying? Jesus with Trump? Yeah. Or like, Trump, well, Trump with Jesus. But yeah, hold on, Trump, but Jesus is like right. I was saying, right? Because y'all, y'all, y'all came in and y'all threw Trump out there. But my, my whole point was that you know what? I agree with you, Keisha, because it's like even when you look at throughout history, we always went once everything is done and the empires are done or whatever, we always see the griminess of the, of the government right. or even our own government. We find yeah, out even years our own later, government, right? Oh, yeah, they did an experiment and it was, and it's like that they ain't tell us that when it was happening. But now, right. 30 years, 40 years down the line, they're telling us all of this. You know what I'm saying? Right. That, even looking at slavery, even looking at slavery, it was like, yeah, that was a yeah, oh, don't legal even get thing. Me started on that because I already saw one of your guys' shows, I think it was. Were you guys the ones who were talking? Were you guys the ones talking about Eshawn Burgundy? Nah, mm-hmm. nah, we touched no? on Eshawn a little bit, but we maybe. ain't really. Maybe. Okay. Cause, maybe. You know, yeah, because <laughs> the, whole, the, whole, the whole slavery thing. That's everything. Literally, everything's a lie. They have literally hidden everything from public, like, just knowledge. You literally got to go out and search for it. It's in books. It's in maps. Yeah. It's in the artwork. It's in everything. But it's the average person isn't going to do that. The average yeah. person wants their iPhone, Netflix streams, and, yeah. you know, a Starbucks drink. You know what I mean? And With the stimmy money. In the and bank. have and, and and to be honest, because we live in a very sexualized, perverted world and a lot of sex. That's what people want right now. They don't mm-hmm. care about knowledge. They don't care about the truth. So it's to them, it's to the average person. It's like I don't even need. They don't even want to know. They almost want to be blind. Cognitive dissidents. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Bars. Yeah. Preach. Agree. Agree. But man, like. Anyway. Yeah. It's it's all a lie, dude. It's all a lie. It, Everything's it's a lie. Oh. Well, yeah, the 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 thing too is like. We don't, we don't, we didn't find out anything like, like all the evil stuff that Bush did. We didn't find out until after he was out of office. Yeah. And we, or you know, Obama. we always find or right. Obama. I was, that's where I was, that's where I was going to go to about Obama too. Obama like did we didn't find out until after. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's, oh, you can't even say that though. 
Thumbs in up, four man. years, in four years, we're gonna find out everything evil that Trump did. You know what I mean? And, and oh no, nah, we already know. We already, <laughs> they was, they we were trying to stuff. you crazy. They were trying to expose them every chance they got <laughs> during the time. Yeah. This, this dude tried to they tried to he got <laughs> nah, but I mean, I mean, I mean like like I mean like the real, real stuff, you know what I'm saying? Like with Obama, you found out that people were being tortured and you know in Abu Ghraib. Uh, uh, citizens were being drone bombed. You know what I mean? Like that but that's what I'm stuff. saying, right? Because we still, like, we still know that um, how much drone strikes Trump did, right? I mean, what I'm saying is, and, and right, and he's one of the, he's done one of. Well, the, he stopped counting. He passed a lot of stop counting, so we'll that's never what I'm know saying. how many. Right. Well, well, but before they stopped counting, right? Well, he was already right. surpassed. Oh, he already Obama. beat the high score. Yeah, he already beat the high score. But yeah. that's what I'm I mean, that's what I'm saying was yeah. they was already telling on him while it was happening. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Because I don't anything... think he's ever going to go down. Well, actually, you know, it's kind of surprising because there's a lot of people that really love that guy. Yeah. Like, to I mean, there's a, a lot, lot of, Christian. of people that hate him. But a yeah. lot of people love him, man. Like, die hard. Man. Die hard. Like I, I was. Die I just, hard. I just forwarded. <laughs> I just <laughs> I just forwarded a, 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 a tweet to, to we have a chat. And somebody was like, we got to go out in the streets and it's going to be a civil war. I was like, word, like for Boy, Trump, man. like civil war. y'all ready to put your life on the wow. line for Trump? Like y'all yeah. bugging. Yeah, y'all I mean, bugging. but it's for anybody. They was doing that for, you know, I mean, they've been doing it like all man. For it, Obama. For, for everybody when they don't yeah. even really know who these people really are and that was one of the things that you know the holy spirit convicted me about man he was right. like you out here watching these big time preachers these big churches every every night on on youtube and you don't even know what their fruit looks like mm, right yeah, you don't even crazy. get to measure their fruit you don't get to measure none of these people and you just watch them and just trust what they say you don't see right. the problem in that i was like wow you know crazy. Crazy. I, just, oh, I understand ahead, why trump is rich Wow, because look he's at amazing. the people that follow him. Because he's amazing. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but look well, at that, the way that, that people too, follow right? him, though. Like they, they, they really fall for it. They're like, yeah, he's the one. Like, I get it now. I know why he's wealthy. Like he's it's got game. Of that Q. It's because of what happened with the Q. That that uh that Q that was put out. That Q and on. Q yeah, and on. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they had him looking like he was a savior. I remember when yeah. I got on there, I was like, man, these people act like this man is Jesus for real. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I might as well have. Mm-hmm. But I was going to say, outside of him not being a politician, man, they all they all the same, Republican, Democrat, whatever. When I was looking at the spending bill, right, um, they had, what, 4.4 million going to former presidents? It didn't matter if it was... Yeah, Republican. I saw that. Republican, Democrat, uh, whatever. Yeah. All, Don't matter, they all bro. got 4.4 million. Don't yeah. matter. Wow. What they need four point four million for? Because they already the get they quality? already get money every year. They get paid just for being a, a president. They live they're living lavish. Not and and they, and they get and they get like twenty four hour security all the time for life. Yeah. them and their families. And how much yeah. does that cost? They're you know so buku, you guys. Buku cash. You guys saw what happened. You guys. <laughs> they're so they ain't, right. they ain't um protect <laughs> Mitch McConnell and Pelosi's garages. <laughs> oh yeah. People say that's a front. Those are front houses. Here's the thing, man. Anything that bad happens to these people is because they wanted it to happen and they wanted to use it as some story right. or some distraction. Some they people, yeah, people have been saying that. By accident. Like her going to the, the salon, right? And right. everyone having a freak old deal about her going to the salon when she when California had just shut down and Newsom going to his dinner party when they shut down. They did <laughs> that stuff on purpose, man. They did that Jimmy, stuff. Jimmy, shout out to Newsom, right? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, recallnewsome.com. You know what I mean? Sign a petition. <laughs> Get that dude out of there, man. man. Yeah, because they, cause, cause they just back. showed a picture of first it was Nancy. They showed that they vandalized her garage over the 2K. And then all of a sudden, because I was like, Yo, why y'all vandaling Pelosi? Y'all need to vandalize Mitch. Mitch is the one that's blocking the 2K. <laughs> then it came money, out that money making that Mitch, Mitch. Mitch, Mitch. Mitch, where's my money, Mitch? <laughs> money making Mitch, Mitch like Mitch, I'm broke. I ain't got no money. Yeah, Mitch's garage got vandalized now too. I'm like, oh okay. Yeah, it Mitch looked a little sus though. Money. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna front. The pictures look That's a little right. sus. I was like, uh, I don't know. I, it, it's it's it. Like I said, at this point, I just start to laugh. Like this is a joke. Like I don't know how anyone could be. It's an illusion of choice. Biden, mm-hmm. Trump, 
Democrat, right. Republican. It's like when it's, you tell your kids you want you want carrots and peas. Right. Yeah. The, the illusion of choice. You're going to have some veggies. <laughs> but see, now, now because the world's so wicked and they've already set up their laws and their bills, they can be bold. They don't have to hide. Yeah. Do you know in Washington they just voted in that our kindergartners are about to start sex ed? Yeah. Wow. wow. It's kindergarten. Wow. wow. Crazy. Crazy. So when you have all you you have the laws to protect you, you got the money to protect you, you got power to protect you, you got the principalities that you worship protecting you. Of course you're gonna get bolder. Why you gotta lie? Yeah, I just Mm -hmm. went and bombed that country over there. What you gonna do about it, American people, which your six hundred dollars? No, we did it for you. We did it for your freedoms. (laughs) Crazy man. How else we gonna (laughs) give you six hundred? Right. Because because you know, Muhammad was threatening your freedoms, (laughs) not not the politicians in D.C. You know, the little guy in the hut and his two children, you know. But I also do feel like like people are starting to really see, like like y'all said, that exposure where they're like, yeah, the government ain't it. And, and they losing a lot of, if they haven't lost trust, a lot of people just like, nah, the government ain't. I don't legit. think it's as much, though. I still think it's more people rely on them than, than we, you know. I think I, there's a lot of people that that they open their eyes to it. Um, right. You know what I'm saying? They've been more looking into, you know, more aware looking into it. But I, I see a lot more people that's they don't care. They're just blind to it. Mm. They don't even care. They're blind to it. Send that 2K. Right. Just give, yeah, me, give me my two. <laughs> Do y'all, y'all feel like the, the people should have gotten 2K? Yeah. That's I feel people should have gotten no K. It's nah, still it's your, your money. It's, your grand, it's not your money. It's your grandkids' money. Our money's already been spent. Well, our, our tax, well, our tax dollars have already been spent, bro. We spending our grandkids' money right now. Well, whatever. Wow. I paid taxes oh. last year. It's my money. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, of course, I think that they should have got more. But at the end of the day, do I? I knew. I just knew it wasn't going to happen. I knew they're not going to go and break their neck to make sure people were going to get money like that. Like. Yeah. This is all intentional. Like you're talking about the same people that are poisoning you, that are putting your life at risk, are the same people you want me. to reach out their hand and say, "Here's the money." No, baby. Yo, and they've been collecting a bag this whole time. Yeah, they've mm-hmm. been collecting a bag this whole time. Yeah. You know what I mean, they got so, a raise so, as a matter of fact. Since, since the lockdown, since March, right? Mm-hmm. What what's that? Nine months. So for nine months, people have been forced to stay home and not make any bread. Mm-hmm. And then all you offering people is two thousand dollars. First, we ain't even got the two thousand dollars. But all you offering <laughs> people is two thousand dollars for nine months of staying home, not working. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that's a joke, man. That's a yeah. joke. It's a slap in the face. I think. I think if um, you know, some people just say, "Nah, we shouldn't get the money," or it's conditioning us for socialism or whatever the case right but in my opinion if we're giving millions to these corporates or these bailouts and all that then we can give everybody else money them dudes don't need that what do we give yo how, how, money? How, how much how much is this bill right here that they, that they just they just 100 bill is it 100 billion and then the rest because it's an anonymous bill so they did they did the so covid did the spending and the annual yeah they did the spending foreign too, aids right. Uh, and they combined it together, and I think it's one point four trillion. Someone, you know, imagine crazy? they broke that up and gave it to everybody, right? But because yeah. I think, as far as when it comes to the stimulus money, it's not even maybe what ten percent of that. That's foul, man. Total amount. So that's foul. And, and we was having a discussion where it was like, oh, but it's it's a combination of the spending bill, right? That it's misleading, or even you know they mentioned that Trump was misleading and saying you know what the money was going to right but to be fair i mean every when we watched the news right everyone said the covid stimulus really? plan yeah you're right right you know what and I'm it saying? was five thousand so, pages and they only had like two hours to read through all of it but oh, see yeah, I, th- I think i think this is oh, good though because about, man. This is, I think this is good because it allows people to look at stuff like this, right? In that context, okay, name it the COVID bill, whatever. But now people are looking at it like, wait, hold up, son. Like, the money I'm getting and everybody else (laughs) is getting is only 10% of the bill. Where's all this rest of this money going? You know what I mean? And so I I think it's good because then people start to think and ask questions. You know what I mean? Like, why is is India getting... You know what I mean? Pakistan is getting gender gender equality. As I'm saying, like you know, research, right? And so, right? 
which 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 is code for you know i mean nuclear research you know i'm saying so like what that, which is true, like you said, Jimmy. I, regardless if it was misleading and always suspending bill, I, right. I think that brought attention to it because right. someone, someone, I don't, I don't think it was Kevin, but it was someone else that that was showing the amount of uh, mentions of coronavirus for relief. Uh, yeah. PPE was yeah. like way like the number in comparison to everything else was low for it to be wasn't some it like of, aircrafts and, and warfare and stuff like that bro there's like yeah. that? military there's, industrial there's complex. treadmills in there yo that's crazy like, i don't even like i don't even know it's just like it's crazy like, yo you could get you can't give me two thousand dollars but you could get a lizard a treadmill <laughs> now, don't get me wrong. I'm gonna t- whatever on, money you give nah, me. Nah, listeners need it. treadmills. No. <laughs> right, right, I'm gonna take right. whatever money you give me. Yeah, sure. you know yeah. what I mean. I'm gonna take it, and I'm gonna, yeah. but I'm gonna try to. What I'm trying to do, man, was I made up in my mind is that I don't because that socialism, communism, that's that's a given. How is why is that? Because that's a they're headed towards the one world system. They're trying mm-hmm. to get everybody on Great the one reset. world system. That's 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 prophecy. Right. So that's in Revelation. So they got to ease their way there. So that's already a guarantee. So what I'm trying to do, man, is I'm trying to be legit. Like someone said earlier, like God's my boss. That's it. I don't want you to have to dictate how I get my money, where I get my money. Nothing. I really just want him to be my boss. So in order to do that, I got to really start tapping into my gifts, my hustle, like Mm. really being fasting and praying over like, okay, seriously, father, how do I do this? Walk me through this because I don't want these people to determine my livelihood. You're the right. only one that has that right. Man. Right. Man. Right. So that's I think if you, that's really where everybody's mind should be is like, okay, let me get right with, you know, the King of Kings. Let me get right. Let me get my salvation right. And then once I'm done and I'm there, then let me figure out how I can get this earthly living right. Like, how mm. do I get out of this, this right. matrix? Like if every at this point, everybody don't care who you are, whether you believe or you don't believe, everyone's realized that most of this world is BS. It's a lot. Yeah. Now, mm-hmm. whether you want to acknowledge it and do something about it or you want to acknowledge or ignore it, everybody in the world has gone, come to realize that nothing is what it seems. Yeah. What you decide to do with that is on you. Right. Oh, that's so that's true. true. Facts. Yeah, there's no you know, disagreement here about that. I I, I kind of regret like when I got the stimulus. I mean, I invested it into more of. You mean earlier uh, this year? Yeah, the podcast stuff, but I could have mm-hmm. did more, you know what I mean? So now, like, I'm like, all right, if I once I get the next stimmy, you know, the the whatever the six, because the 600, 600 hasn't hit my account yet, you know what I mean? IRS, man, right. what's up, man? Stop playing. Holla at your but, boy. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, not only that, but I was collecting too, and, you know, they were pretty generous with the uh, unemployment, you know what I mean? So I did a lot of stacking, but just r- more investment now with, with, you know, whatever money comes in from. Yeah, man. You know, Whatever's Listen, going on. You got to flip that bag, man. You know what I'm saying? You can't bury it in the ground. You yeah. know what happens when you bury it in the ground, bro. It just stays there. You know, you know what I mean? You're a wicked servant. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you got to flip yeah. that bag, son. Yeah. You know? nah, yeah, because I felt like that's how I felt. I was like, man, I, I invested into all this other stuff. You know what I mean? And we needed I needed it, obviously, but it was like, right. you know, I could have taken a little bit and flipped it. Can I tell you something? Yeah. That that all that is true, but you want to know the greatest investment that you could ever make is the spiritual investment. If you take some of that and you sow it into God's kingdom, you'll get right. so much more back. Right. We don't speak about that enough. Like literally, and I'm not even trying to say this to brag, but I, I just want to say this as a point because I don't know who else is going to be listening, but I feel like I'm being led to say this is this was the most, even though this was the hardest year I had as far as money goes, I wouldn't even say that. But it was, I had to be more careful with how I spent my money. Mm-hmm. Got to be a good steward, I, right? Yeah. But at the same time, I gave the most this year that I've ever given in my life. And when I tell you the, the reaping I'm receiving from that, I'm not saying you should just give to receive. But what I'm saying is, right. it's like when you give from a good place, like yeah, the Lord bless he you. honors that, man. He loves that because he's like, oh, I could trust you with money. I could trust you with my people. So I'll give you more. I'll give yeah. you more. Oh, you're a giver. I'll give you more. Right. I'll give you more and more and more. And so that you're, you're satisfied, but people around you will be satisfied. Yeah. That's facts though. I've experienced that, man. You know, I, I don't like, I don't, 
I'm like the least hyper spiritual person in here, man. But like, Allah. The, you think so? <laughs> <laughs> you were yo, charismatic. But, yo, but yeah, I am reform charismatic. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> it's it's facts though, man. It's facts. Like there's been times where like I've given to people, right? And then a stranger will give me bread. Like just hand me bread. You know what I'm saying? Like there's been times when I've been short, like for rent or, or something, and I start counting. And then every time I count the money, it's more money. Like for real, you, you know what I mean? Like let's just say, let's just say, it. let's just say it's like a hundred dollars, and then that joint will be like one forty, and then I count it again, and then it's like one eighty. And try to give God the glory at the nah, nah, nah. <laughs> he's listen, finding listen, drug listen, money. Nah. He's finding nah. drug money in bags. <laughs> listen, I, I, listen, I mean? listen, I, 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 I can't do one. high level. I can't do high level two. math. I can't do high level math, oh, but I know hallelujah. I know I know my, I know my I know my oh, I know how to convert hallelujah. grams. I know how to convert <laughs> ounces. You know what I mean? And I know how to count tens, twenties, and hundreds. You know what I'm saying? Do tri- tripped into a trap house, <laughs> yo man. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, from the wicked to the righteous, man. <laughs> yeah, the wealth of the witch is rich. Uh, the wealth of the wicked is stored Yo, for but the righteous. Speaking of, speaking of charismatics, man, just kind of shift gears. What y'all think about uh, Mace being ordained minister, man? Did y'all Again? see that? Get on that tip for a minute. He need to slow down. No, he took over a church, didn't he? Yeah, he did. And he, Creflo. Out helped. there in, in, in Georgia, right? Yeah. Uh, did you say under Creflo? Well... Oh. Nah, uh, it's another dude, but Creflo was there. To, uh, he was in the know. meeting, he, right? He yeah. did. He did. He did the uh, the breaking of the, the bread, shade. right? The communion. Yeah. Y'all saw what Jim Jones wrote? <laughs> nah, <laughs> he wrote. He, he was like, "Oh, this again." <laughs> uh, he was said. digging all. I'm like, "Oh, okay." We doing this again, huh? That's the thing, man. We got it. We got to be official, bro. Because you know, we got to be a light watching, to the man. world, man. The streets is watching, watching, and they just like waiting. That, you know. I I don't know enough. I don't. I don't know enough about that to even have a comment on it but what i will say is all i know is if you if you really accept him as your lord and savior man like you're expected to be a new creation and so Mm -hmm. if 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 you if you got if you made a deal with the devil and got your fame and riches you know you don't get to keep that yeah you got you got to give that up that's why i don't believe kanye's been delivered or nothing like that i'm just i don't know i speak i'm, I'm honest uh you know what i mean people can not yeah. agree with me and that's fine but it's just like it's just like the scripture where you know he asked a lot of he asked quite a few people quite a few people in the bible to give up their riches to follow him in right. some way or, or another and they couldn't do it and well man yeah. mm. So I don't know. I mean, but Mace hasn't been big time for a long time. So maybe he really is. But when you start mentioning names like Creflo and you know what I mean? It's like, uh, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I'm not yeah, him. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, right, I mean, yeah, he yeah, knows. Yeah, but yeah, I'll tell course. you what, I probably won't go kicking down that door. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to be visiting that church. <laughs> yeah, anytime. I'm just, just to be safe. I'm going to just sit back. Exactly. Oh, wait, hold up, Jay. You going to Atlanta, right? You going to go visit the church? Yeah, you yeah, next somebody, which one? Which woman to tell Mace? You you going this weekend? Is it this weekend? Yeah, this weekend. Wow, what you going down there for? Another low soul battle. Another low soul battle? Yeah. Slash house hey. hunting. He's That's not Christian. Slash house hunting. hunting. Oh, you going house hunting too? Yeah. Well, house hunting. We're oh, okay. You trying to move to Georgia to, to go to Mesa's church, huh? <laughs> yeah. I mean, now that he's <laughs> taking over, might as well just pack up New York. It's whack anyway. Let's get right. out of here. Right, 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 right. Okay, <laughs> you following his footsteps, right? Leaving. I've never leaving, been leaving to your... a, I've never been to like an actual real. I'm gonna say this story: a real church in Atlanta. But the one church that I did go to was when I was still gay, and so the bishop was gay, and his they called him a first man. What? And he had a boyfriend, a husband. It was crazy. And I remember I was still flaming like gay, like I still dressed like a dude and everything. And I remember being in there, and be like, something don't feel right about this. Wow. <laughs> wow. 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 Atlanta. But like he was that? he was openly gay to the, 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 the pastor. It was like yeah. a gay church. Yeah, they this? called they called him they uh, called him a bishop. We got we gotta get into this now. <laughs> I don't I, I would have to Google it, but um the girl that I was dating at the time, she lived in Atlanta. I was going back and forth in Atlanta all the time. And I was like, cause okay, so here's the thing is I got I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior in December of 2013. 
But okay. 2014, I still was losing my mind. It didn't it didn't change instantly. Like I still right. was out doing the most. So in that year, I was like doing a lot of just craziness. And so I was dating this girl and I was down in Atlanta. And so I was like, you know what? I want to go to a church down here and see what it's like. And so I did. And that's where she's like, oh, I've got a perfect church for us. And she took me there. And yeah, he was he was he was called the bishop and his husband, quote unquote, husband was called the first man. And yes, his, wow. he had his mom was there in the front row. And she, clearly she approved of it. They had I mean, everybody there was gay. I mean, everybody from studs to to femmes to flaming gay men, like what? masculine feminine you name it like it was the just whole a gay was, church it was just the gayest church ever <laughs> the gayest church Yo, that's and crazy. i remember just looking around like man that's kind of crazy like at first when i walked in i was like this is cool my people you know and then as they right. were singing and as he was preaching i was like my just my i just felt like man that's I don't the spirit think, right yeah like i don't think this so you, is right wow. like something about this so you wrong. already kind of you already knew that even though you had um verbally accepted christ right um, you had already knew like this was wrong. Like no. you didn't try to justify it. No, no I didn't. did. Oh, I did. Oh, I tried. Oh, to you try to say that? Yeah, oh, I got, I got God now, and He accepts my lifestyle the way I am. Yeah, I got into it with uh, many believers actually over it. Yeah. Um, wow. How did you? How did you get saved? How did you hear the gospel? Can we start? There? Um, yeah. So okay. So it's 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 like anything, and like everybody, everyone has a journey. So I don't mm-hmm. think it was a one moment thing. My grandmother was probably the main source. Mm-hmm. Um, my whole life, she, you know, she was saved and she, her and my grandpa, uh, I went up there once a month, sometimes a couple times a month, and they were always in Bible studies. She was always preaching Jesus to me. Um, she would always send me home with Bibles. Um, and so I wanted to believe in him. I wanted to believe there was this all powerful, knowing, loving God that died for us and he cared for us. All the things that she taught me, but you know, yeah. I had a really hard life. You know, I, I was, I was a young, young kid. I was sexually abused, physically abused. Mm. I grew up in poverty. Um, I had a lot of identity issues. I didn't really have the strongest relationship with either of my parents. Um, at the time I didn't have, uh, I grew up alone with my dad. He was always off running the streets at that time. So I grew up alone. I didn't have toys. I didn't have a lot of birthday parties. You know what I mean? But at, the only thing I had right. was basketball. That's why I became so good because that was the only thing I could focus on that actually was good. That was going to take me somewhere. Um, right. So I, I would say, and then I had a friend who was like, you know, she always loved the Lord. So she was always preaching them even as a young age, but I just couldn't get with it. And, um, and I would actually read the Bible, man. I used to write notes to God and everything my whole childhood, like begging him, change me, take me away from this place, you know, all kinds of stuff but i would say by the time i was like 16 um 16 17 i was like man i ain't no god so i just kind of took that atheist route and refused to acknowledge that there was even like i didn't believe in you said this was 16 yeah 16 17 and you you you're you're already living a gay lifestyle at that time oh oh yeah i started sleeping with women when i was like 14 okay wow Um, yeah Mm. probably i would say messing around with girls kissing touching upon like when i was like 12 11 Um, I was exposed to sex at a very young age. So, Mm -hmm. um, you know, I could talk about it. You know what I mean? I'm not ashamed of it because he delivered me from it. But you know what I mean? Like when you grow up in poverty and your parents aren't home or you're a latchkey kid, those tend to be the kids. Like my house was the one everyone came to because they could come away and get away with stuff because no one was home. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, um, so yeah, so I would say about 11, 12, it started like, you know, doing you know, second, first base stuff. And then by the time I was 14, yeah, I started like doing full on, I started having sex with, with women. And uh, by the time I was like 16, 17, I was like, yeah, no, nah, I don't believe in this God stuff. Y'all crazy for that. Ain't nobody. Y'all, it's like the Easter bunny. I used to say that he's like the Easter yeah. bunny. Y'all just want him to be real. Wow. And, uh, and so, you know, I went off, played basketball. I told you how I got injured and stuff. And when I came back, my dad bred me to be a ball player. Like, I tried to get a job because I was broke all the time. He told me your job's basketball. You know what I mean? He didn't even let mm-hmm. me get a pet dog, nothing like that. It was like basketball, basketball, basketball. So I didn't have a license. I didn't even know what a social security number was. I just got dropped off into reality and all my dreams got shattered. And I was like, what am I going to do? Wow. Like, where am I going to go? I didn't move back with my dad. I never moved back with my mom. I lived in my grandparents' house and I went through a heavy depression, like dark. Like I tried to kill myself when I was wow. 19. Uh, My grandma was like, if you're going to stay here, you have to have a job and go to school. That's it. Mandatory. So I was like, all right, well, so I started going to community college um, and I started working two jobs because I was like, well, I'll just travel. 
So I was just traveling all over the U.S., meeting girls, having sex, do just whatever. That's why I was in New York all the yeah. time. And um, anyways, so uh, I would say when I was about 19, 20, they had said I was like schizophrenic and bipolar because I was wow. like hearing voices. I was sitting in the dark for days at a time. I was like, I was up and down. They put me on medication and uh, I, I got really big. Then I got really skinny. Then I would like be stuck. It was just crazy, man. I went from wow. therapist to therapist. And then finally I was like, man, hell with this stuff. I don't need this stuff. I'm a drink. So I started drinking and that's how I became an alcoholic because wow. I started using that as a coping me mechanism. And then also I started, I started smoking black and miles, but black and miles were too expensive. So I started smoking cigarettes. So I, I went from being this all-star athlete to being an alcoholic and smoking cigarettes in a matter of wow. like two years. <laughs> wow. And and so for 10 years, man, almost 10 years, man, I was just a monogamous serial dater, sleeping with different women. I was a big partier. There wasn't a party I wasn't at or throwing. Then, you know, I was smoking weed, smoking cigarettes, uh, just just wild, man, just fighting, just driving drunk. All, I mean, you name it, wild. And yeah. um, it wasn't until I was about 26, 27. Um, and I was in this this relationship off and on that was really, really bad. It was a really, really bad relationship. Uh, that's why I know soul ties are real because we just couldn't let each other go. Wow. And um, anyway, so like, you know, I had went camping with my family once and I was started staying with them. I was living in a shack. This is what I was talking about a long way in my song, Long Way. I was literally living in a shack in my back of my uncle's yard. It didn't have no walls, no insulated walls. It was literally like something you put your lawnmower in. I just had a bed out there and we called it the smoke shack. <laughs> so, I was, <laughs> so I was staying with them and we went camping one weekend and I was drunk like always and I almost died. Mm, wow. Um, I was a... Uh, Cause like I told you, I was really reckless. So whenever I seen stuff or I thought to do stuff, I would just do it. And so we were walking down this raging river and like walking on the bank. And I was like, man, that looks like a slide. And I jumped in and it just took me. And wow. like, I was just in and out of the water. I really thought I was going to die. And I remember just all of a sudden just hitting this, like the water just got calm. It just stopped. It just like literally stopped this raging water. And I just swam to the bank and my, my friends pulled me in. And that stuck with me. And so I was sitting, when we finally came home, I was sitting in the back of that shack, like smoking weed. And I was like, man, like, I remember at this party, I almost got shot. Or at that parade, I almost got shot. You know what I mean? I was just thinking of all these situations that I almost died. Now the Lord and, was sparing you. <laughs> man, and, you know, or the times that I would drive drunk. Like, I remember I got pulled over three times, blackout, wasted, and then never got a ticket, never had a DUI, never got arrested. Wow. Stuff like that. So I was just like, man, maybe there is a higher power looking over me. Mm. Maybe. Maybe there maybe, is. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe. It made, it made you rethink that, right? That yeah, grace like, is I'm, real. <laughs> I'm yeah. telling you. Man. I was like, man, I don't know about this Jesus thing, you know, they're talking about. But maybe there might be like a, a God of the universe or, you know, something out there looking after me. And I kept that in me for a long time. Me and that girl that I was dating, you know, we finally got back on. I moved out with her and... um our relationship was crazy. I never stopped drinking, never stopped partying. And I, it was just bad. And then finally she left me for somebody else. And what oh. happened was I put all my eggs in that one basket. So when she left, she pretty much took everything. So I was mm. back down to nothing. And at this point I was like 28 and I was just like, man, I was just, I went on this long walk and I went walking down this alleyway. And I remember I just hit my knees crying, man. I just hit my knees crying so hard. And I looked up and I saw a church and I was like, man, maybe I should see what this God thing's about. So I wow. went to the church, went to the church. I can't say nothing really magical happened or anything like that. I don't even remember what happened. I just remember going there feeling like maybe I found something that won't run from me. Hmm. Yeah. So I eventually moved in like a month later. I moved in with a friend. Um, she was letting me stay in her her like small little box of a bedroom um, for rent free till I found a job and stuff. And um, it was in that room. That I started reading the Bible because some one of the girls I was dating had gifted me a Bible, and um, wow. and Look and I started. God. I know, man, it's crazy, man. And uh, and so I started reading the Bible, and it was in that bedroom by myself with that word that I just accepted Him as my Lord and Savior. So it's always been a very personal journey. I never yeah. believed that you needed a church or you needed a huge fellowship. I just believe when He calls you, He calls you. 
Right. And um, so I accepted them there. And like I said, I, I then just went crazy. I went even crazier in 2014. 2015 came. I went down to see another girl I was dating in Dallas and I got really drunk. It was the Mayweather Pacquiao fight. Mm hmm. It was that is that same night and I got super wasted, like blackout wasted. And I remember we let I thought we were going to go back home, but we did. We went to this like strip. And I remember as soon as we walked in the bar, I saw demons everywhere. Mm, wow. wow. Hanging off of people, seeing them on the TV. I started freaking out, man. And they're like, yo, she's drunk. Let's get her home. I'm like, no, I'm not drunk. I've been drunk many times. You don't see it right there. The right there. The right there. They were hanging on drunk in people. Yeah, I, this is something else, you know what I mean? Right. So a normal person would be like, take me home now, I'm done. Not me, not Keisha at that time. I went to the next place and just started throwing them back. And we just got into this huge fight. Next day, wake up, she tells me all these things that I did. And I was talking about demons and it scared her. And so she, we got into a fight and then she was like, I'm done. I'm dr I'm taking you to the airport like early. And I was like, my flight don't leave for seven hours. She was right. like, I don't care. <laughs> I'm done with you. And I was like, damn. So <laughs> we, I'll get to the, I get to the airport and I remember, man, just sitting there for hours thinking, man, I'm the common denominator to all my problems. Mm. And all I could remember was the one verse, which was do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Mm -hmm. And so I just kept saying, please, God, save me. Help me. Help me change my mind. Help me change my mind for six hours. That's all I prayed. Wow. And I got home. That's dope. And the next day, I just heard his small, still voice just say, it's time for you to date me then. And I knew what he meant. And it was like, all right, the next person I date or I'm going to be with, it's going to be someone you sent. I thought it was going to be a woman because I thought I was born gay. Right. So when all I started getting more Christian friends and stuff and they're like, Keisha, it's a sin to be gay. And I was like, no, it's not. I was born this way. He wouldn't call me here. He changed, made me this way. I got in arguments. Mm. Man, long story short, I spent that whole summer at his feet in the Bible, listening to sermons, worshiping literally divided like devoted all my my waking moments even at at my job i was in the bible and by the end of that summer it was like i was changed from the inside out i didn't look at women the same i didn't wow. want to drink i didn't want to smoke all i wanted to do was serve the lord and it just kind of started from there praise wow. god so so you you growing up you always felt like you were born gay um I wouldn't say growing up, I thought I was born gay. Mm -hmm. I think that um, I don't I don't even remember thinking about it. I think I was just very hypersexual. I, I just did both. You know what I mean? And yeah. there was a minute that I say in my early teens, I started saying I was bisexual. It wasn't until like I started to become like for real gay that I started to like tell myself I was born this way. Mm -hmm. You know what okay. I mean? Um, but when I was in elementary school and stuff, I can't say that. I mean, I knew I was different. I had all these girls that were girly girls and I never wanted to wear makeup. I never, you know what I mean? Like I the thought tomboy, I was, right? Yeah, I was a super tomboy. I was a ball player. I played with the boys. I, you yeah. know what I mean? And so they all, they all would say stuff like you're gay or, um, you know, the boys didn't like me back. I thought I was ugly. You know what I mean? I, when I was with the white people on my mom's side, I was the nigger. They would call me in Spokane. Mm. And then when I came to Seattle with my dad and I was around all the black people, they called me white girls. So I never fit in anywhere mm -hmm. so i thought i was ugly i thought my my hair was different than everybody so i didn't like my hair um, i thought i just looked better as a boy so i always wanted to be a boy even mm -hmm. when i became gay then i wanted to be a man like i really really thought you know he made a mistake like whoever made me however got here it was a mistake like i mm -hmm. i really there's many a times where i almost really went and figured out with the doctor how i could start the whole process of changing wow. my, my so identity. you're going like, to transition, transition. Yeah, I really, I really, really thought about it. But there was yeah. always something just like, nah, you're tripping. Don't do that. There was always something pulling me back. Now I know it was because he knew in the end I would be here and I'd be on fire for him and I'd be bold with my story. But yeah, like it was just a huge identity issue, man. Like I was a poor kid who didn't have a relationship with the people that were supposed to nurture me and care for me and mm -hmm. show me what it's like to be a woman. But then also have a man that's supposed to show me what it's like to be loved by a man. I was out here just like the devil just was in my ear and he was controlling my walk. Yeah. Wow. Man, that's wow. good stuff. You know, and 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 we appreciate you being bold. I, I think um, Brinson, shout out to Brinson, episode, man. Yeah, with Brinson. Mm -hmm. And he oh, had mentioned Brinson. you 
yeah. you know, and, and it's still true even till now. It's like, you know, we don't hear many saints, that many saints talk about these things, you know what I'm saying? Right. Coming from uh, the, the lifestyle or, or, or and stuff like that. And I feel like sometimes we have a disconnect with the, um, with, you know, uh, the whole, the, 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 the whole LGBT community, right? Like, you know, us dudes that are, are straight and we've been straight our whole life. Even when we was in the world, it was like, nah, gay. I don't really mess with that too much. You know what I'm saying? And I think, you know what? I think, I think the, the, the Lord, church, the church is accepts it though. Like it's acceptable to be, to be a man and be a hoe, right. And to fall and to have like lust issues and, and porn addiction and, and right. like, like that's ex- like you're not supposed to do that. But if you fall and you do that, like it's all right. You know what I mean? You'll be all right. The Lord will forgive you. But it seems like with the gay issue is like we just don't talk about it. Right. You know, like we just like it's taboo. You know what I'm saying? I think that people just don't know how. You know what I mean? I think that's um, true. That's true. Because Because you have this thing going on, right? Like people didn't talk about it before because no one was hardly anybody was doing it like out and open. Like it wasn't as acceptable. Right. Right. So, like, that's why it was okay to not talk about it or put it under the rug or right. just act like the choir director isn't gay or, you know, right. such and such. It's, it's okay. But now it's so hard because because it wasn't practiced, because it was never acknowledged and it was never taught, it's never taught in the homes. Now you have a world where they're pushing the agenda. They're almost shoving it in it's your face trend. of, like, no, you're right. the moment you're right. you just say, I don't agree with this because the Bible says, they're like, that's hate. That's hate. That's no, hate, it's, yeah. It's not hate. And so if you're not strong in your word, then you can't defend why it's not hate. Mm -hmm. And you don't have a natural love for people because you don't have like you just go to church every Sunday. You don't Mm -hmm. read your Bible. You don't have a relationship with people or with your word. It's going to be very hard for you to have that conversation because it's such a it's such a touchy subject, but it's such a deep spiritual issue. I can tell you because I've lived it most of my life, that it's a spirit that comes with many spirits, Mm. many spirits. You get addiction in this lifestyle. You know what I mean? You get perversion in this lifestyle. You get identity issues in this lifestyle. You know what I mean? Like it's, 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 it's so heavy. And so it's not like you're just touching this one subject. You're touching all these subjects in this one subject. Mm -hmm. And people, if you, if you've never lived it, experienced it, or you don't know the word, and you don't have a natural love for that person, it's going to be really, really hard for you to talk about it. And I right. think men, it makes them so uncomfortable to have this conversation. Because I got a guy, I have a guy friend right now. I'm not going to say his name because I'm going to protect his privacy. But sure. we used to run the streets and bars together. And he's now married with to a woman and has two kids. Wow. So his life has been transformed. And he's asked me many a times, how are you so bold? How are you going to go do this? I'm like, bro, you just got to do it. He's worried about what people are going to say about him because he know how men are. Mm, right right you know what i mean but at the end of the day because i I did watch the stuff that i did watch the show with you and brent i watched a couple shows but but i watched the show with brinson and you guys talking about this and how he was like saying that he doesn't think that men have pretty much the gumption uh to to talk about it but you know here's the thing for god i live for god i die you just got to do it who cares what yeah. everybody else say? Eventually, right. everybody's got to get that mentality. I don't care if it's homosexuality, alcoholism, right. porn, whatever. Right. The thing is, it's all a sin. It's, it's all, all a sin. A sin. Right. So you got to be bold about it and talk about it. Right. Period. Yeah. And we overcome by the word of our testimony, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Absolutely. Of what Christ did. And that's good, man. I, we, we appreciate you with that boldness, man, to come out and, and, and really talk about that, man, and touch on that. Um, you know, we've seen Jackie Hill talk about it and a few other individuals, but I, I think it's good because I have personal family members that live that lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, you know, it's like it's always having that balance because they already, you know, once it's Christian, once you put out that word Christian, it's already. <sighs> all right. It's, a wall, it's already right? a little. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's I, a Christian. I'm so sorry. We went over an hour. So my kid is like, hold on really quick. I'm yeah, here. yeah, yeah. Hold on. No problem. No problem. <laughs> Well, yeah. while we while we while while she goes uh, check out her kid, um, I just want to remind everybody <laughs> that seventy four percent of you that watch our videos on YouTube are not subscribed. So, here's what I want you to do: click the uh, for, before you do that, click the thumbs up button. Yeah, please thumbs up, subscribe to the YouTube channel. We we really appreciate it. It lets YouTube know that you like this content, and they'll push it out to more people to right. view it. So. 
Uh, if you could do us that favor, yeah. that would be awesome. And subscribe, share like, it with your friends. Comment, share. You like the show? Share it. Share it. Text your friend. You yo, you don't like the show? Comment. <laughs> oh, Shout out to Kyle. Kyle. <laughs> what up, Kyle? <laughs> Salute, King. We'll have a talk. We'll yeah, chop yeah. It up. So make oh. sure make sure you hit that subscribe button. And um, oh, okay, sorry about yeah. that. No oh, worries. Always, we're just good. letting our viewers know to hit the subscribe button because seventy eight percent of them don't subscribe, and we want them to subscribe. Subscribe <laughs> right now, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, switch. You were talking, and then I, I have a follow up to where you were. What you're you were saying about your family, saying? the wall. Yeah. yeah, but I was. I was saying like you know we. I have family members, and and they're you know they live this lifestyle, and we love them, and we, we you know we treat them the same, and um. But, you know, it's always already like once we start talking about God and Bible, it's like, ah, you know what I'm saying? It's like that wall comes up right away. Um, and, and sometimes I think it's, it's like uh, people already feel like you automatically hate them in some kind of sense or you don't want to be around them. And it's not even that, you know what I'm saying? But um, ah. it's good that, you know, we have uh, you to give out your testimony and say, look, you know what I'm saying? Like you can, we can, we can share this as a moment to say, mm -hmm. "Hey, look, we know other individuals that've been in that lifestyle, and God has changed them too." You know what I mean? God can change right. anyone. You know what I'm saying? Right. And I think that collectively, uh, whether you're a believer or unbeliever, I think that a lot of people struggle with the fact that you can't be delivered from it. Yeah. yeah. People don't realize that the spirit is is so strong that he can literally change you from anything. It doesn't matter what it is. So. And I didn't know this, you know what I mean? I just assumed that everyone would believe me. Right. I still got people that think I'm lying because I ain't been, I'm not married yet because I'm not dating a man yet. Mm -hmm. But it's not because I'm still gay. It's because my original agreement with him was whoever I date next is going to be because he sent him. Right, right. And so, and I mean, don't get me wrong. I've talked to guys. I've went on a date with guys, but I'm not going to put that on my Facebook or my IG. Like, I don't. I, <laughs> right, right, right. Christian Mingle, Christian Mingle. Look, I'm on right. Christian Mingle. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, but, you know, a lot Yo, of. Yo, how would that look, too, right? Look, guys. <laughs> look, I'm not gay. I'm on a date. Look. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Say hi, Mike. <laughs> <You know>? Right. <laughs> Like, but, like the people giving out to the homeless. Look, I'm such a good person. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a lot of other things, too. I mean, you said, you know, you were getting high, you were getting drunk. You know what I'm saying? So it was yeah, a, like, you had a plethora of things that came in. I'm sure there's confusion during that period of time. Man, like, like, you name it. You name it. The only thing I never did was hardcore drugs. But I was around mm -hmm. it, you know, and that was another yeah. thing is like my family on both sides have always done hardcore drugs from heroin to meth. I saw it. I witnessed it. I was around it. You know what I mean? So right. I just became a product of my environment. I think the reason why people don't bash me as much as they would as someone else is because of my testimony. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like uh, like people, people like like, I don't know, Tina down the street who ain't never been gay, who's just in support of gay people can't really bash me because i I've actually been gay. You ain't been gay. Right. You know what I mean? I could tell you and I could relate to these people that are struggling with whatever, if that's alcoholism, if that's addiction in any form or if it's homosexuality or any identity issue there is. I, I tend to relate to them more and I don't look at it like it's a sin. I look at it like my my heart hurts, dude. Like I know what you're going through. Like mm. I want you to be saved because I know you're not happy. There's no way you could be happy. God's mm. not here. Mm hmm. Man. So I'm not looking at just trying to condemn you. I'm coming with a. I'm coming like tell me your pains. I'm, I'm. I'm. It's kind of like what Je like what Jesus did in when he was out doing the ministry. I do this because I don't really call him Jesus, as you guys can probably tell. Right. But right. when 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 he was out, you know, ministering to people, he he was feeding their physical need. He was feeding their flesh before he fed them spiritually. He came and right. gave them water. He he met them on a human level before right. he. He just came in with the boom, but you know what I mean? He built the relationship. And I think that a lot of people when they're trying to minister to people, they just come hard with the, with the scripture. Yeah. You barely understand the scripture and you expect this person who ain't never read the Bible to understand what you talk about. Mm -hmm. right. They only understand love and compassion. Show that right. first. And then once you get their trust, then once you get their, their heart in your hand, then you can come in and be like, this ain't working for you, baby. Yeah. Let me let me show you a different way. And I just I just think it's approach. I think it's so many things that we just got backwards, dude. It's just mm. it's horrible. Talk yeah. about it. 
That's good <laughs> stuff, man. I'm yeah, loving this. I agree. <laughs> Yo, Jay, you had a question? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, well, she pretty much just answered it because I was just going to ask, you know, <laughs> what what should somebody do who's a believer and know somebody or see somebody struggling um, yeah. with the homosexuality or whatever? Like, what would be the approach? You know, we know that we need to be compassionate and all that stuff. But like, what 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 else, you know, would Keisha um, say? But she pretty much says so. so. But if there's well, anything I, extra. Let me, let me let me let me piggyback off of that. Um is there anything that at that moment when you were a teenager, is there anything that your your father could have done or said differently that may have had um, an impact or that would have made a difference? Or is do you think that it, it, it really you were already like in that lifestyle of sin? So it was only it was only like God who could pull you out of that. Good question. Um. I mean, it's really hard to tell, right? I mean, yeah. sometimes hindsight is twenty twenty, but sometimes sure. you just can't tell because you just don't know because that just wasn't the life. But I can't tell you that my lack of relationship then was a major effect, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But it wasn't all my dad's fault. It wasn't all my mom's fault. It was just, it was everything. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But yes, but for your specific question, yes, there was a lot. Like, here's the thing. And this was another. And then this is. This, I'm sorry. And and this isn't necessarily just like your situation, but for people who are listening, who may have, you know, what I mean, kids who are yeah. going through this. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. yeah. No, no. I, t I totally get it. It's, and I'm gonna explain. I'm gonna give you an answer, and I'm gonna explain why. Perfect. Because, with me personally, I wanted to be like a man stud, as they called it, mm -hmm. because when I looked at men, and then I looked at the women in my life. I saw that men got to roam the streets, cheat, beat, lie, do whatever they want and still come home, get a home cooked meal. Women would grovel at their feet. They could do no, mm -hmm. they never left them. I was like, dang, it's easy to be a man. They get to do whatever they want to do. Mm -hmm. Whereas women, they get beat on, they get cheated on. They got to cook dinner. They got to take care of the kids. Mm -hmm. I don't be no damn woman. Right. right. <laughs> they got it wrong. Right. I don't want this. Right. So I wanted to be a man because I thought there was freedom. And if you go all the way back to my first project, that I put out, I put out this song called um, The Journey. I talk about mm -hmm. that, of how like I like I looked at men. So my dad, I needed him to be a leader. I needed him to be nurturing. I needed him to be present. I literally lived in his house. And let me just say this, God has done a number because if my dad ever watches this, I don't want him to like, I'm honest with my story because I have to be. Right, but right, I don't want right. to bash my dad. Me, I'm, right. like God is, I'm now close with my mom and I'm now really close with my dad. Amen. God is literally transformed Praise my God. whole Praise life. Praise God. Word. So I now have that dad. I now have that relationship with him now. And I could tell you, man, it feels so good to my soul to have a man. Because the spirit, it's like people don't understand the spiritual components to a man and a woman, what their mm -hmm. roles are. A man is a leader. He's a provider. He's the covering. And so the man, and that's why, and that's why Satan tries so hard to tear up the home, the marriage, mm -hmm. to keep them right. away from their kids because Facts. they are literally the spiritual covering in the house. You take that covering away, Satan could come in, he can deceive Eve, the woman, mm -hmm. he can mm -hmm. get in the kids' minds, he could break it up. So if I didn't have that spiritual covering because he was off doing what he was doing, and so it allowed the enemy to come in. But if he was there to confront that, look, like, what are you doing? He First off, I wouldn't have been able to have sex and do all those things because he would have been home. Right. Right. So I, he, I would have had that spiritual cover and I would have had the relationship. And he would, if he would have been a better role model as far as a man, I probably would have been like, man, I can't wait to marry a man like my dad. Right. Mm -hmm. So it would have changed things. So I think that the best thing a man or a father or any parent could do is you have to go to scripture. You have to have that relationship with Yahweh. And then you have to have the scriptures to tell you kind of what's right, what's wrong, who you're supposed to be, how you're supposed to be, how you how you do it. And it'll help dictate how you raise your kids and to keep them from that. I mean, at the end of the day, they have their own walk. So even if you do all the right. things right, they may still go that route. Right. But the scripture says if you if you if you raise a kid right, they'll always Ways. come back to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So and that's my belief because scripture says it. But right. Yeah, definitely. If if my mom and dad were in active, healthy roles in my life, I definitely don't think that I would have went the way I went. But who knows? Maybe I would have. Yeah. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Dope. How that's about <laughs> that's something that came up came into my mind? How about with like dressing and stuff now? Do you like? 
be like still like yo i'm gonna wear jeans and a hoodie or do you like change it up yeah so it's so funny because like i had a fade right like i don't know if you guys ever seen oh yeah yeah me, but i had yeah. like old fade and curls whatever yeah. um but now I, my hair is like down to here and i'm yeah. never gonna cut it unless i trim <laughs> it but no i love being girly oh i just love it <laughs> i love i love lipstick and earrings and dressing up but don't get me wrong the, to the tomboy girl's still in there because i've learned just right. because you dress in sweatpants or a little bit tomboyish right it don't make you less of a woman right 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 that doesn't depict who you are as a woman because woman is spiritual and it's biological right. it's genetics mm -hmm. Right. So, um, but no, yeah, like I'll, I'll throw on some, some sweat. I'm wearing sweatpants now, dude. Like, you know, <laughs> you know, but then I'll throw on some heels, but I had to grow. I had to like start over. I had to like go back to that little 15, mm. 13 year old girl. And I had braces and my <laughs> hair was like this long. And I was walking around with like jeans and a man's wallet. Cause I didn't know I could go out and get a purse. Like I literally had to start over to become this blossoming blossoming woman yeah. you know what i mean yeah. <laughs> do you do you also think like the the whole sexual abuse because I, I was sexually abused as well as a as a, as a child Huge um part. so do you do you think that that also kind of influenced it in some kind of sense because i know for me it was a little opposite because it was a male that abused me so mm. i had to grow up to prove i was a man you know what i'm saying yeah. so it was like i was more into females and stuff like that like i don't know i'm not you know what i mean to distance myself from thinking i was anything else you know what i mean so do you think that that also um kind of like uh framed your mindset too as well like that situation uh -uh. yeah well first i'm sorry that happened to you yeah um, no doubt but secondly um yes definitely and here's why i say that one i've experienced it two statistics it shows you that most people that live in a home that um operate in a homosexual lifestyle were sexually abused mm. and then third like literally i was knee deep in it there was not one straight man i knew for like 10 years like wow. like i mean i knew them but there wasn't i wasn't cool with them like i literally hung around gay people all the time and i could tell you 99.9 .9 percent of the people I hung around that were gay were sexually abused mm. Whether that was molested, um, raped, it doesn't man or man or woman. Right. So yes, I do believe that. Now I'm sure, pretty sure there is someone out there that never was sexually abused, had the greatest home, they had the greatest upbringing, they were raised in the church, they had this like perfect life, and they still ended up gay. I'm not saying that this is the definite way you right. can become gay. But I'm you know just more saying, stories. Like, more, you know, out of the you know majority of people that have been gay for a long time sexual abuse identity issues um lack of a two-parent home uh mm. poverty these things play into it but now mm. who knows because it's so it's in the media it's in the news it's on the movies yeah it's, every show you know on I mean? netflix it's, like, it's in it's in it's popular. yeah yeah every yeah. show on netflix has a gay character yeah it's every like, show in general even even kid shows yeah it's, it's like, like becoming the way of life it's like it's like I mean some people say it's one percent. Some people say that that gay people make up five percent of the population. But why is it in a hundred percent of all of our shows? You know, say it's like they always got to introduce. <laughs> I, like I a think gay I think it's more than that. I think that most people. I don't mm -hmm. want to say most people. I would say a lot of people are gay now, and that does. And maybe they're not outwardly living it, but mm -hmm. they you know they're into some we just the it's the world's perverted now everything anything yeah. goes i mean yeah. they're trying to legalize uh men having sex with young young kids or just adults having sex with young kids so you know yeah. we just live in a perverted world man and th but this Sad. is scripture this is scripture this is where he said as in the days of noah it mm -hmm. will be yeah. in the last days L yeah. look what they was doing they was doing the most they was they was doing the most so that's where we're headed you know so I don't know, man. Crazy, yeah. Lord have mercy. So p yeah. pivoting a little bit, you 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 mentioned you mentioned your your one of your earlier songs and earlier. How many projects do you have? Ooh, quite a few. So wow. I have. It's a lot, <laughs> right? <laughs> well, cause uh, so I have memoirs of Akisha, Transform, Soul Food, Dinner, Wow, and now Full Circle. Okay, so I've been sleeping on you. Right. <laughs> I, I, I got to keep it a buck. I've been sleeping on you. I found out about you because of Free Spirit. OK. And and, and I got to keep it a buck. I, I it's 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 like a pop record. And I, I can see yeah. that joint like being huge. I heard it. Actually, I heard it on, on, on Dash Radio. I heard it on GH3. Right. And I was uh -huh. like, yo, this record is like huge. Like it could be bigger than what it is. Right. Mm -hmm. But 
I like I like bars, right? I like hip hop, right? And that's but when I heard Long Way, I was like, oh, oh, <laughs> oh, I was sleeping, right? You, and then I, and then I saw and then I saw your your your, your barbecue series. Oh, uh, this. and I was like, and I was like, yo, like I was I was straight sleep, man. So my apologies, oh, I was sleeping on you because no, when I heard you good. when I heard you when I heard you doing that on well, I saw it on on Instagram. I was like, yo, Shorty got bars. <laughs> So how how did you get started in 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 uh, doing music and all that? Oh man, like, that's that like? what, it's so God given, God driven, man. I got told I was a ball player, man. I just yeah, it was literally all oh, the Holy Spirit because don't get me wrong, I used to write. That was my outlet. Right. I didn't have toys and stuff like that, so I was I was a poet. I used to write right. all the time. I used to when I was a little little girl, like I used to, when I was eight years old. I used to tell everyone I was going to own my own record label. And I was oh, going to be because wow. like I just love to dance and sing and stuff like that. But once I got serious in basketball and stuff like I never that that was kitty stuff. That was by who, who was who was a who was a year old, eight year old uh, Keisha listening to and idolizing and looking <laughs> up to. Oh, man. Uh, Mace. Mace. OK. Mace. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that whole bad boy record. But I love yeah. Tupac. Um, yeah. Uh, I was a he- I was like a heavy East Coast rapper type of girl like eventually right. i started loving nas um hardcore illmatic was like my favorite rap mm-hmm. album of all time um i love but i love jagged edge mm-hmm. um usher mm. uh tlc okay um 702 i don't know if y'all know them yeah i remember 702 <laughs> I remember them. going way back you're going way back <laughs> yeah but no so like i really wanted to like do that but then you know i got serious in basketball so i never mm. thought about it again and then um after i got you know transformed and changed and i wasn't right. gay anymore and I, I ended up rupturing my achilles um i started getting back into writing because i had nothing else to do right. and uh, i was sitting there writing i got this you know my writing back and then i remember going to a friend and i was like hey i got an idea how about i write your poems for you you just perform them <laughs> ghost writing <laughs> okay ghost writing poems. <laughs> She's like, no, nah, I don't think that's what God's wanting from you, sis. I think you're supposed to perform him. And I was like, ah, I'm not into that. I tried that, been there, done that. <laughs> now, for real, like I did comedy. I had like a whole comedy show with a poetry show, like in my early no 20s. Way. Yeah, like I, that story is crazy. Like I'm telling you guys, like I was crazy. I just did stuff. And so, <laughs> and so um, I was like, no, nah, I've been there performing. I have stage fright. I don't like it. No, I'm good. I'll write for you. She's like, no, nah, I'm not going to do it. So I just kept writing, kept writing. And then all of a sudden, one day I was writing this uh, poem about premarital sex and and, and soul ties. And it's on my first project, but it's called um, uh, Undercover Lies, Lying Undercovers or something like that. But um, I started and then the Holy Spirit said, rap it. I was like, what? No, I I don't rap. That ain't me. He's like, I said rap it. And I was like, nah. But, you know, I had been in this journey where I was like, I want to be obedient to you. You know, the whole Matthew 633 thing. So I was like, all right, I'm going to do it. I did it. It sounded horrible. So I was like, I know what I'm going to do. I got some Tim boots in my room. If I put on those Tim boots, I know I can do it. The the anointing will fall on you, right? (laughs) You heard? Tim's a mad. You you click the heels three times. The Tim's is. So you know what I mean? Like I got on this. I got on this cast in a Tim boot, and I'm crutching around, and I'm trying to like I don't know. I'm just sitting here trying to figure it out, and it sounded horrible still. But I kept at it over time, and then. Uh, I wrote my, I finished that song like in a couple weeks. I was like, I'm gonna record it on my phone. So I did. And then I was like, mm-hmm. y'all listen to this. What do you think about it? And they're like, yo, Keisha's actually pretty good. I think you got something. And I was like, for real? And they're like, yeah. And I was like, okay. So I just kept going. And then next thing you know, about four months later, I was in a studio recording my first mixtape, which was Memoirs wow. of Keisha. Wow. And then six months after that, I put out Transform and then not much longer. What, what, what year did I drop again? That first one? 2016. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so been I've only been. Minute. I mean, yeah, no. I mean, some people, most people I know, they're like, I've been rapping for ten years. They're like, how long have you been rapping? Mm, four. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know what I mean? I mean, right. I'm grateful everyone thinks I got bars. You know what right. I mean? But I mean, right. I'll be the first one to tell you. I know women that can rap way better. Rap me under the the table. <laughs> but I did not here to be famous. I'm not here for a name. I'm here because right. God put right. me here. So yeah. you know, mm-hmm. it is what it is. 
so did you have to learn like bars and cadences and all that? Like, yeah. If you go back and listen to the whole project, you'd be like, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, no, it was hard, nice. man. It was hard catching that. You know what I mean? Like that beat and like just riding it. You know what I mean? Yeah. It sounded very elementary. Don't get me wrong. I have an ear for music. And right. I see that now. Like I've always had an ear for music because I was always a fan before anything. Like I told y'all, I was like bumping everybody. And yeah. that's why it's not hard for me to support people because I'm a fan of good music. Mm-hmm. So I have an right. ear for it. So my music was always good, but the bars were never there. And the mixing and mastering wasn't all that good. I was, you know, it, it wasn't as professionally right. sounding as it is now. Mm-hmm. Full Circle is honestly my first project where I feel like I took my time. I waited on, you know, the Lord to really show me what to do, where to go, how to do it from background. It's the first time I've actually been bold with my singing because if there was a minute I didn't think I could sing. So I think nice. full circle is like really put me on the map. So that's why I'm like, I, I was sleeping on you. I'm like, oh, this is really surprised me because I really wasn't ready for anyone to see me yet. Right. There was right. things that I needed to learn in the background. There was things I needed to learn about music. Right. Gotcha. Gotcha. So now we dope. here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I made it now. I'm on, I'm, I'm on here. Right. <laughs> when, when did you drop uh, full circle? August 28th. August 28th. Yeah. And it's out everywhere, right? All streaming platforms? Yeah. Everywhere. It's on iTunes, Spotify, you name it. You can download it straight off of my website, too, if you need to. It's Keisha. And what is that? It's Spell Keisha. that out. Oh, okay. I-T-S-K-E-A-S-H-A.com. I was going to say, it's right behind it, but for right, the audio right, listeners. For the audio, yeah. <laughs> if nothing else, just look Apple up listens. K-E-A-S-H-A. It's Keisha. Yeah. Oof, How you feel about CHH? You you a big uh, CHH fan? Are you like ah, it's cool? Are you listening to anybody in CHH? Yeah, I listen to man. That's all, literally I'm like when you know how like people talk about super Christians. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I got the cape, man. Like I'm like seriously <laughs> one of those people where like literally all I do is listen to people that talk about God. Mm-hmm. Um, so. You know, I, my playlist is I got a plethora of people from Cannon to Derek Minor to Brandon Pete to people like my friend Tia to, uh, you know, you name it. Anybody that's mm-hmm. out there from Brinson to like I listen to everybody. Now, this, this is what I will say about CHH is you have some people and it's not many, some mm-hmm. people that are unique and different. So they have their own sound. But for the most part, I think CHH is trying so hard to copycat the world. I agree. Mm-hmm. I agree. So everything is just sounds the same. same yeah. So I listen to it because I'm a supporter of music. I like it's good. But after yeah. a while, your ears just be like, golly, man, am I listening to the same person? <laughs> <laughs> That's facts. And so um, it's just I just feel like there's a lot of like I struggle with that, with the the whole, the you creativity. know, not just. Yeah, just not just this this genre. And it's not even just not even this genre. It's not even just Christian hip hop. It's gospel music. It's everything. I feel like, yo, we serve the creator, dude. Mm, right. We have the Let's spirit. Go. We have Shabba. the genius inside <laughs> of us. And we are not tapping into him enough clearly because we're trying to copycat a world built by Satan. Right. Instead of creating the lane. We should, we should be creating the lane, not them. Let's go. Mm-hmm. So, um, so I struggle with people that are trying so hard to, I struggle with that, of yeah. like trying to copy at that instead of just, dude, you, Being you, creative. you can sing, just be creative, be, yeah. think outside of the box, don't do what you other people want to hear, do what he created you to do, and do it well, and if people rock with it, cool, if they don't, who cares, forget them. Right, All right. Preach. That's Those are fat. bars right there. You spitting bars yeah. right now. <laughs> <laughs> Word. So who who yeah, is but, who is? Oh, go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. I was just gonna ask you who who are some of the people that like you see in the space that you'd like to work with. Ooh, that's a good question. I'll tell you the truth. I'll tell you the truth. The first person that I, when I first got into music that I wanted to work with so bad, like. That's all I talked about. Like I prayed about it was um, he ain't even in here no more. Who was the dude that used to run with Ruslan? Uh, Belief? Oh, John, John, oh, John, John Gibbs. Gibbs. John Gibbs. Oh, John Gibbs. Yeah. I loved it. I remember when I first heard his album. 
He's dope. I was like, who is this guy? Who right. is he? Like I was Googling. I was like, he's so good. And I followed him. And then he just like, he came out and said he was walking away and he's kind of just on this other tip. And I realized mm-hmm. that's who he's always been. You know what I mean? He was lying doing this other stuff, but I wanted to work with him. And then I also wanted to write music for Brianna Babineau. Um, I don't know who that is. Uh, she, she kind of went like really viral doing like cover songs of like um, make me over like a lot of older gospel songs. Yeah. And then, and then she came out with her own album. This girl could sing, like pretty young lady could sing her just heart out. But I feel okay. like she makes music because that became that's how she blew up was from the old gospel songs. Right. I feel like whoever's writing her music, whoever's her camp, they just stick to that lane of just that older sound. Right. But she's a young person. She's younger than me. Like I would love to take she's that huge. soulful. That soulful voice and and emerge it with youthfulness and just make bangers for her. So like, like that's who I want to work with. I want to write songs for her. I'm su- serious about she that. She sounding like Shirley Caesar out here. <laughs> <laughs> um, man, uh, I want to. I would love to do a song with Cannon. The only thing is he's so south, and I'm not. But I just love him. I just love him. I would love to do a song with him. Um, let's see. God, I can't think. I'd love to do a song with Brandon P. I would like him as a producer and him as an artist. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, let's see. Who else? Uh, I would love to do a song with AI. I love her. Um, yeah, she's a beast. Ooh, we can set beast. that up. <laughs> well, I, we can I'm, actually that. Really cool. <laughs> I'm actually really cool with her. We actually are actually becoming friends. Nice. So, who knows? Um I'm actually becoming friends with quite a few people. It's kind of blind because I listen to them. I'm like, dang, I know you. That's really weird. But um, <laughs> I'd like to do a song with Brinson. I think Brinson has a unique sound I'd like to do with him. Man, I don't, I don't want to make music with anybody and everybody, to be honest yeah. with you. I can't. Like, I listen to so many mm-hmm. people, but I'd have to pull out my my list. But Yeah, your playlist, right? Yeah, but I, I'm, when I tell you listen to everybody, I listen to everybody. From Brit Smiles, from, I mean, everybody. Nice. Everybody, I listen to. So you ready to get? You ready to? You ready to perform back on stage? Man, I I miss it. That's Mm. my bread and butter. That that's where I struggled. That's where I really struggled with twenty twenty one, with twenty twenty. I um not being able to perform. Yeah, because this was like people didn't know me nationally. But I'm bl- I'm kind of blowing up a little bit in my city, and because of my testimony, because of you know I used to rip around the streets and stuff. A lot of people respect me. Not I actually had more non-believers bumping my music than believers for a long time. Wow! So they would actually invite me into bars. So I performed in bars and clubs more than I ever performed yeah. in churches. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. So I was getting paid shows like every week and sometimes multiple times a week. And then it just got bigger and bigger and bigger. That's and I dope. actually got invited to perform at the 2020 Fest in L.A. OK, cool. Oh, so you're going to be there this year. GH3. Yeah. As long as, you know, okay. as long as I still have me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, um, cool. But so yeah, that means so we're going like, to connect. These... You guys going to we... be there? Yeah, we're going we gonna to be world. there. We're going we gonna to try to be there for sure if it happens. <laughs> Uh, I, always I live nice. in LA, so I li- I live in LA. These dudes, except for Aunt, lives in Georgia, and these dudes live in New York. But I'm like right oh, down yeah. the street. Yeah, I just was there in LA in November, so I went by it to see like how big it was, and I was like, yeah. "Oh shoot, it's huge!" They play it's a so- it's a soccer stadium. It's like LA's team. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, joint so, is, that joint is huge. Yeah. So when everything got canceled, I was like, "Man," because like that's one thing that I know that I'm good at. I am a great performer. Like I don't have to be the best rapper or whatever, but I am, I'm energetic. I'm in your yeah. face. I'm like very big on like interaction with the crowd. Like that's why people kept inviting me because I was really good at that stuff. And so that I missed that connection. I did a performance in a studio and I'll never do that again. I couldn't tell if people was looking at me. It's just one camera. I was just all <laughs> over the place. I was like, they didn't even see me. Are they hearing me? I was, I was like, this ain't for you me. You need that energy, right? Yeah, yeah, I need it, man. I miss it yeah. so much. I got to get back on the treadmill. You know, I didn't gain like 20 pounds. But... <laughs> me too. <laughs> me three. Eating all these, 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 this, this, this little boy's uh, fruit snacks. And... Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I want a we... snack. Yeah, it's dad wants a snack too. I want we, snack right. too. <laughs> we all skipped the apples, huh? 
Nah, that's what, apples he said, too. what he said i've been running trying to get in shape i felt that i was like me too bro i just because i'm struggling i used to run for miles man i don't know 2020 was like you ain't gotta run i was like you right and me too <laughs> me too i actually i i, I we gotta I usually, look good for <laughs> I, I i i gotta i i usually try to right i usually i usually try to get a workout in or something like that but uh yeah 2020 was kind of like if i wasn't as i wasn't as consistent <laughs> And man, this 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 DoorDash Uber Eats really messed me up, man. But at the end, you were you were doing we were, we were, we had made a agreement to do our thing, and you you was you was posting a lot like doing the um the jump ropes and the I was jumping oh, rope, yeah. and I I I stopped I stopped after Thanksgiving. It was up. That was a wrap. Yeah, that's what happened to me. The year was a wrap. Yeah, I dropped like ten pounds in in like three weeks, four weeks. Dropped ten and gained thirty. <laughs> right that's what nah, it is that's the game the back up like nah. that. <laughs> that i'll tell you that was one of the is about no celebrating that stuff is i didn't eat no ham turkey mac and cheese mm-hmm. none right. of that stuff i was because I, I didn't celebrate it no more yeah, so yeah. like i man, everything but yeah i i have been just kicking back enjoying it i started strong i was still running riding bikes it was sunny outside it was all good and then i just stopped and then all of a sudden, my weight was just like, "Poo!" I was like, "Whoa!" So what we getting happened? back on. <laughs> Them pounds were like, on. "Remember me?" These sweatpants used on. to be baggy. Like now they're like s- stretch pants. Like what's going on? Twenty twenty one. We getting get on. Right. I got and word, I was word. vegan. I was vegan too. Like I was. I wasn't really eating meat like at all. Uh-huh. So now I'm eating. I'm going back, but I was eating chicken nuggets and all kinds of stuff. It was bad. <laughs> <laughs> kids do that to you, man. I know. I mean, I heard you guys are got kids, but kids, man. I, I was a single woman for thirty something years. All of a sudden, this kid gets in my life. Slows the pandemic happens. Everything just like was like just ruin Ooh. your waistline. <laughs> That's what kids do. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fact. That's so whoever he is, wherever he's coming, he's gonna have to love me for who I am. That's facts. <laughs> That's facts. <laughs> wait, wait. Well, uh, we want to thank Keisha for coming on thank the show. Thank you so much for coming. For real. The great yeah, conversation. Definitely. Yeah. Um, I hope everybody enjoyed it. The listeners and the and the people that watch the video. Um, where can people find you? Uh, anywhere and everywhere. Um, IG is my favorite place. So if you want to actually really dialogue with me, go to it is Keisha on the IG. Uh, you can go to Facebook too. You can go to Keisha Beard or it's Keisha or it's Keisha.com. I'm never on Twitter, so don't even bother going there. <laughs> um, you can email me, booking Keisha at gmail.com. I mean, you name it. I'm just not going to give you my phone number though. No, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Smart. The, the, right. I just noticed uh, um, earlier in the show, I was like, oh, it looks like a slum, but it's literally your face that you have as your uh, Oh, you didn't notice that? That's the album cover. No, I didn't. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Album cover. I didn't. Excuse yeah. my my ignorance and my my sight. That's why. That, oh, that's why you said it looks like you have hair all over the floor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's why. Because I, I mean, she was sort of covering it too. So, I got but you. anyway, <laughs> anyway, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna tell my wife to make an appointment for the optom. What is optometrist? Whatever. Yeah, optometrist. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Uh, thank you everybody for listening, subscribing. Make sure uh, you get your merch shop at that's not Christian dot com, and uh, we're back 2021. Big things coming. Yes. Make sure uh, you stay tuned to the fastest growing Christian podcast. That's See right. you next week. Peace. Peace. Bye-bye.